Welcome to the Zaxby's pregame show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the NFHS Game of the Week brought to you by Zaxby's. We're here tonight in the beautiful Troy, North Carolina, at the home of the Timberwolves. With me is a young man who... Believe it or not, I saw baptized as an infant um, back when he was young, young, got to teach one of his younger brothers. So it's really cool to be up here tonight with the now grown up, mature adult, Seth Hoyle. So Seth, welcome to the broadcast. Give us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Nate. It's great to be here. I graduated from UNC Chapel Hill back in December of 2021. I currently work for the Chapel Hill Chamber of Commerce. Just drove an hour and a half to get here, and I'm fired up. Fired up for some high school football. Friday night in the fall in North Carolina cannot be beaten. Um, I did get the opportunity to go to Texas and coach back in 2016, and I think that might be just about as cool as this. So, all right, so tonight, getting this rock and rolling, we are watching the Union Pines Vikings take on the Montgomery Central Timberwolves. Um, both of these teams are on the rebound from the 2021 fall season. Yep. Um, the uh, Montgomery Central Timberwolves coming in at 2-8. and eight. Last year, their two wins, or sorry, 1-8, and eight, their win last year was against Asheboro, which has historically been a very good high school football program. Uh, they are competing this year in the 3A Mid-Piedmont Conference. I think they might have been a byproduct of the redistricting of schools that happened last year that watched our what used to be the Tri-County. Before that, it was the Cape Fear Valley. Um, really flipped that conference turn ahead over here. So all of our viewers at home remember that. Um, but if I remember correctly, when I was coming up and I was coaching, Montgomery Central was a 2A. So I think they probably just got bumped up to 3A last year. So they're really trying to make their name here at 3A football. Um, playing in the mid-Piedmont last year, won by North Davidson that went on to compete in the state championship last year. So in a very, very strong conference here. Um, and then Union Pines coming off a 2-8 and eight season last year. Their head, fo head football coach, Jason Truesdale. Um, was his second year. He was a defensive coordinator there previously. He's This is now his fifth year with the program. You know, the last couple of years with football, Seth, has been really, really weird. Um, you know, in 2021, we had two seasons. We had a spring season and a fall season yep. due to COVID. You know, the protocols, all of the testing, certain number of kids in the weight room at a time, certain number of kids in the locker room, they're having to wear masks. They're not having to wear a mask. I tell you, high school football has been really, really weird for the past couple of years. Um, talking to Jason Truesdale today down there at this beautiful facility here in Troy, North Carolina, everything's open. Everything's back to normal. So I think this might be our first real season of high school football back. You know, we're not going to have game cancellations for COVID outbreaks, I hope. Fingers crossed, right? We don't want that anymore. Um, so, a couple of key players for the game. Seth, who you got? Uh, I really think Ben Finkelstein of Union Pines is going to be a big key tonight. Okay. I hear that Union Pines think their strength is going to be in the offense, and he's he has the keys to the engine. Ben Finkelstein coming back. He's a returning starting quarterback there for Union Pines High School. I think you're right. I think a lot of it will come down to how he slings the ball, how they run the ball, and make sure they don't turn the ball over. Last night, Montgomery Central drove to Cameron, North Carolina, for Union Pines High School for the JV football game. Montgomery Central came out on top 20-18. to 18. Union Pines, though, talking to Jason Truesdale, they turned the ball over four times. You know a lot of sports. I know a lot of sports. You turn the ball over four times. Who is going to be a, going to be a long day? In talking with Jason Truesdale, he, they we're going to see a little different offense this year from Union Pines than we've seen before. Um, they're going to run – their base offense is going to be a wide zone, so I think we're going to see running the ball a little bit heavier. Um, I don't think we're quite to the RPO level of, of that offense yet, but they've simpled it, simpled it down. Um, uh, simpled, I think that's a word. You, what do you think? Simplified, is that the word? Simplified. See, this is a Chapel Hill graduate here. <laughs> I'm a lowly Campbell alumni, so Campbell's, we simpled it down. All right, so back to back to our offense here. Um, when I was talking to him earlier today on the phone, he was talking about, 
less plays, more looks. Um, so I think we could see a little bit of formation changes throughout the night for Union Pines High School, which I'm really excited about, um, especially if we start seeing guys go in motion, especially in motion number 14, Ethan Biggs, who for the past couple of years has been the stud for Union Pines High School there. As a freshman, he was picked as all-conference um, Sophomore year, he was all-conference, and he only played five games last year, so he got injured. Um, he was also picked this year for the preseason All-State team by High School OT, which, if you don't know, is the WRAL Sports Department service line, yeah. however you want to call that. Um, so Ethan Biggs, number 14, definitely the guy to watch tonight for New Pines High School. If they get him in motion, they can block it up, and he can get the ball on – uh, on a sweep, on some sort of jet motion. You can get the dangerous. ball in the flats. He is dangerous. He is a really, really dynamic kid to watch. Um, so definitely really looking forward to that. Their base defense this year is going to be a 4-4. Four, four. Um, so for those at home who don't know, four down linemen, four linebackers. So you'll have three over the top for coverage. Um, rolling down from cover one to cover three, so man underneath. Could be a really fun defense to watch. Um, on the other side of the field, the Montgomery Central – Timberwolves, and if I'm going to go ahead and, and lead this off, if I say Wolves or Timbers, I apologize to all of our Montgomery Central fans at home. Um, their strength this year is going to be their defense, without a doubt. On their uh, preseason All-State selections, number 20, Aiden Allsbrook, who is their middle linebacker, he is an absolute stud from what I hear. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to him. Chris Metzger, who, you know, renowned in this part of the state for high school football, Took over Pinecrest High School in 2009. Another interesting, well, 2008 actually, 2008 season. Another interesting fact about Chris Metzger and the Pinecrest football program. Um, I was on the Southern Lee High School program in 2007. I played there from five to seven. Um, and we had just beaten Pinecrest 63 to nothing. And they had actually, the school board had voted to end Pinecrest High School football, period. Um, wow. They were going to shut down the program. One of the big-time boosters came in, said, no, nope, we're not having this. We're going to pull this coach out of Florida. Um, you know, 50, how many years ago was that, Mr. Carolina? 15 years 15 later. 15 years later. Um, Chris Metzger went to Pinecrest, pulled them up to a 4A state powerhouse um, and is now down here at Montgomery Central, previous 2A, now 3A, really looking to, to develop a program here. Chris is a great guy. He runs a great program. He has very high expectations for all of his kids. So I'm really excited to see Chris Metzger play uh, or coach. Um, having coached against him when he was at Pinecrest, I didn't enjoy that as much. Um, <laughs> Chris Metzger loves to run the Veer offense. For those who aren't familiar with the Veer, it is a, an adaption of the triple option. Um, and it was really made famous by – the We Are Marshall movie uh, yes. when Matthew McConaughey went to West Virginia University to learn the veer from them um, after that infamous plane crash that makes me cry every time I watch the movie. So we're not going to talk about it much more. <laughs> um, but Chris Metzger loves the veer offense. He loves to move that, that strong side guard all around. So we'll see. I think we'll see some veer. I think we'll see some triple option and a little birdie who watched one of their scrimmages against Lee County. Not saying it was anyone from Lee County, but it might have been someone from Lee County. Told me that he also has grown to sling the ball, um, which for Chris Metzger and one of his teams is very, very rare. One of our keys to winning against Chris Metzger and the Pinecrest Patriots back when we were coaching against them was to make them throw the ball. Um, they usually average two to three throws a game. So if that tells you how little they threw the ball. So it very be very interesting to see his progression, what he's doing here with the Montgomery Central Timberwolves. Really excited to be here tonight. Really excited to watch Aiden Albrook, Ethan Biggs, all the boys. Um, high school football's back. This is the best back. time of the year. High school football on Friday nights, college football on Saturday nights, <laughs> NFL on Sunday. Monday through Thursday, we sober up and do it all over again. <laughs> Just kidding for all of our fans out there. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. Seth, before I do, anything you want to add in before we rock and roll into the game? Well, as a Carolina fan, I still have nightmares of Georgia Tech running the triple option over and over and over down our throats. In so the Paul Johnson days. Yes, sir. They're going to run <laughs> fast, run hard, and I'm excited to see what this game holds. Seth, I'm so excited to have you here tonight. We're going to grab a picture before, before we get off the air. But, everyone, thank you for tuning in to the Zaxby's pregame show. We're here at Troy, North Carolina, with the Montgomery Central Timberwolves as they host the Union Pines Vikings. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you at kickoff. 
Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. you've been injured in a car crash buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the pinehurst toyota smart buy program visit pinehursttoyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want try the pinehurst toyota smart buy it's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car legacy commercial and residential construction from concept to design constructed to fit your lifestyle we use only top quality finishes to make our house if you've been injured in a car crash the personal injury lawyers at king law firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve call king law firm today the call is free the consultation is free the advice is priceless king law firm we fight to make it right jen ritchie and her staff at everything pines can show you all the southern pines pinehurst aberdeen and bass have to offer a trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. Jen Ritchie and her... Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. 
buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring... If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan. Featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan. Featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. 
From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring if you've been injured in a car crash the personal injury lawyers at king law firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve call king law firm today the call is free the consultation is free the advice is priceless king law firm we fight to make it right legacy commercial and residential construction from concept to design constructed to fit your lifestyle we use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Welcome back here to Troy, North Carolina as we get ready to kick off the Montgomery Central Timberwolves taking on the Union Pines Vikings. This is the NFHS Game of the Week Brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. I hope they're okay. I might shorten that down to Legacy Construction before the end of the night as we continue our, uh, our all of our sponsors get to run commercials throughout the night. So I'll probably shorten that down a little bit. We do want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to all of our sponsors before we kick off here in, in Troy. We have Zaxby's who sponsored our pregame show. We love Zaxby's. Zaxby's been a huge sponsor of New Image Media and high schools and high school sports all around the state for many, many years. So we're really looking forward to having the Zaxby's Coaches Show coming up later on, ne beginning of next week. Um, so Zaxby's, huge, huge, huge sponsor of high school sports. So Zaxby's, thank you very much for everything you do. Second is Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. They are our Game of the Week sponsor for the year, so huge shout-out to Legacy. Really looking forward to working with them as this season progresses. Shed Depot will be our first down sponsor this year. Shed Depot here in Southern Pines, Pinehurst, those areas, huge, huge supporters of local high schools all around. So for all of your prefab shed needs, make sure you go to Shed Depot. I don't know their slogan, so I'm making a, that one up for them. Great the, place for hardware. Great place for hardware. Next place we have is the Remax Red Zone. Remax has always been a huge sponsor, large in part to our producer, Tim Copas. His wife is the Miss Remax of, I think, Central North Carolina. I don't know the actual numbers, but I think she's top dog in Central North Carolina, if not the entire state. So always a huge shout out to Crystal Copas and the whole Remax team there. Thank you for everything y'all do. Next we have Pinehurst, sorry, Pinecrest Toyota is going to be um, some of our halftime sponsors and for our halftime show. Also for some of our halftime shows will be King's Law Firm. They're in Sanford, North Carolina, and I believe their main office is in Raleigh, North Carolina. So a huge shout-out to King's Law Firm for all of your 
um, legal needs. Legal needs, your property needs, your criminal defense needs. Make sure you go see King's Law Firm. I know they're doing a ton of closings there in Sanford, North Carolina, to uh, you know get people into their nice new homes at these uh, great interest rates. And last but not least is Everything Pines is going to be our post-game show sponsor throughout the season. And I think they're a group of realtors as well. So for all of your realty needs and other everything, pine, pine, everything in the pines, Everything Pines is our sponsor. Make sure you go see them. So recap a little bit before we get this kicked off tonight. We are here at Montgomery Central High School with their, the Timberwolves, led by head coach Chris Metzger, his second year here at Montgomery Central. And they are hosting the Union Pines Vikings, who we're here following. Um, we're going to be running two teams this year, so we actually have another team tonight at the Lee County Northwood team. Uh, sorry, Lee County versus Northwood game there in Sanford, North Carolina. So make sure you get to tune in and switch back and forth between us and them. You get to hear me and Seth. I'm Nathan Cochran. This is Seth Hoyle as your play-by-play -play and color commentators um, here in Troy. And then we have Kristen Lambert and Jerry Chalmers at Lee County tonight. So flip back and forth. If you have two computers, log in. Log into them both at the same time. Get all of your local high school football tonight. See pretty faces. It'll be great. So it looks like we're getting ready to have a kickoff. They just had a coin flip. I was busy talking to you, Seth. I didn't get to see who won, but we'll figure this out pretty quickly. If I know Chris Mesker, he probably uh, wants to kick off, put his defense on the field to start the game. So we'll see how this goes. But, Seth, tell us a little bit about um, some keys to the game, just, just in general in general football knowledge. What are some keys? Well, for Union Pines, they've got to get Ethan Bix going. Ben Finkelstein has to be on – on point, they've got to put points on the board. Their offense is the key, and it's strength versus strength tonight because Montgomery Central has a hellacious defense. Very nice, very nice. So it looks like Union Pines is going to be kicking off to the Montgomery Central Timberwolves here. We're going to try to finagle our way around so we can see numbers. And I, I agree with you tonight, Seth. I think I definitely think the key for Union Pines is going to be get going quick, get the ball into Ethan Biggs' hands quickly. And for this Montgomery Central defense, I definitely think it's going to be stop the perimeter run. Um, with someone as dynamic and slot as, as Ethan Biggs and some of their running backs, you want to make sure you contain. And with the uh, – with a, with a preseason All-State linebacker, Aiden Allsbrook, it's going to be a really fun matchup tonight watching that. So it looks like we're getting ready to kick off. Looks like, Seth, do you have a number there for us, buddy? John Cannon. John Cannon's about to kick off for the Union Pines Vikings. John Cannon, a junior at Union Pines High School, 6'0", 160 pounds. This is a big high school kicker. Kicking into the wind. Again, the one kicks it down to about the eight-yard line. Recovered by Montgomery Central. He has a hole. He's got, oh, we've got a flag on the play. One man to beat. Taken down. Oh, oh, nope. And he's still on his feet. Taken out about the 42-yard line of the Union Pines Vikings. But we do have a flag down right at the 36-yard line. I have a feeling it's going to be a hold on the Timberwolves. But we'll wait and see what the white hat has to say. Sometimes on kickoffs like that, holes just open up. Holding on no, on number one of the Timberwolves. So the, the Timberwolves will take over at about the 26-yard line, um, and they will be going with the wind. So headed in. So they are going to be coming from your right to your left, the Montgomery Central Timberwolves in yellow, your Union Pines Vikings in their white and blue, signature white and blue. Coming out on defense first. So let's see how we're looking here. The Timberwolves coming out number five at quarterback. That could be one of four people, Mr. Evan Lucas, Tom Medge LaGrange, Martez Johnson, or Zach Stansel. Timeout Montgomery Central to start. Said that it, you're, you made an interesting point. Kickoffs are very, very hard. Kick returns are very, very hard. It's very easy. There's a lot of open space. It's very easy to get your hands outside of the sh of the shoulder pads, and uh, you know it, it's real easy to tug on that on that jersey, get a flag, and it's early. Let's let's remember this is the first game of the season. We're going to see 
some penalties that you won't see late in Absolutely. the season as much. You know, all these teams are getting the kinks out. They Most of them had scrimmages last week. I know Union Pines had a scrimmage last week. Uh, Montgomery Central came to Lee County and was part of a big scrimmage jamboree last week as well. So, you know, these guys are just getting going this year. So so we'll probably see some penalties early. they got to temper down those nerves. It's not often you see a timeout called right after the kickoff. Oh, you don't usually see that. So the Timberwolves coming to trips to the short side of the field, the sideline side. Number five quarterback, running back in motion, number one, Javari Chapel. Catches the ball on a swing. He's got some green grass taken out about the 43-yard line by number four of the Union Pines Vikings, Caleb Milton on the tackle. And that's the sort of play we were talking about earlier. If they're going to be throwing it, they're probably going to be throwing short little swing passes, getting guys out in space, running to the sideline. We do have another flag on the field. We talked earlier about early jitters. Block in the back by Montgomery Central. I, I do want to say something real quick while while we have the white hat on the microphone. This is an absolutely beautiful facility here in Troy, North Carolina. I, this is the first time I've ever been to Montgomery Central, and I don't know how much money they spent on this facility, but, oh, my goodness, it's nice. It's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. I wish every place we went was this nice. So the Timberwolves coming back. It'll be first and about 20. First and 19, give or take, on their 21-yard line. Ball snapped. Another whistle. Another whistle. White Hat had not called the ball in yet. You've got to wait for White Hat to get back, blow the whistle before you snap it. We talk about those early season uh, little mishaps. That's okay. No harm, no foul. Number five quarterback. Setback trips to the wide side of the field. Swing. We've got a quick tunnel. Number two on the reception, Natavis Powell. Taken out about the 32-yard line. Very similar type of play to the same as last time, uh, except this time they threw to the far side of the field, just trying to get their slot receiver out in space. That tackle there was made by number 20 from the Union Pines Vikings, Brody Trinnell. And to all of our parents at home watching, it is early season. If we mispronounce names, we apologize ahead of time. Montgomery Central coming to a two-back set. Doubles to the short side of the field, one wide. Number five quarterback, hands the ball off for an inside dive, taken down about the 40-yard line. That carry was on number nine, Brandon Powell. So we've got a couple of Powells here on this Timberwolves team. We've got number two, Nitavis Powell, and number nine, Brandon Powell. Don't know if they're related or not, but I would assume so. White Hat still talking. Looks like we have third and five for the Timberwolves. Big third down here. You know, every team comes out, they want to get, get points up on the board quickly, get your team going couple penalties to, to hit this drive. Big third and five down here. We've got a false start by number 14, Seneca T Lowry from the Timberwolves. Looks like he left a little early. He was on the slot side. Third snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty. That penalty will bring it to third and ten. That's the third penalty of the night for the Timberwolves already. Head coach Chris Metzger, I, I know the man, and, I, and I've coached against him for many years. He does not like those. I would expect as the game goes on, we'll start seeing less and less of that sort of thing. Absolutely. I have a feeling they're going to have a uh, an, an ear reduction pretty quickly on the sidelines. Trips to the wide side of the field coming at you. Oh, we can fumble. fumble snap. Taken down by <laughs> Union Pines Vikings in the backfield. Number five on the tackle, Brett Clemens, middle linebacker, was brought on an A-gap blitz. After a fumble, after a bobbled snap by number five from Montgomery Central, not a whole lot he could do after that. This brings down a fourth and long, fourth and 18 for the Timberwolves. Number 30 coming on. I'm going to make the assumption that he's going to kick it tonight. Obvious punting situation. Obviously punting. That very easily could be John Hernandez Vargas. Um, they have him listed as number 31 on our roster, but he's wearing 30 tonight, so I'm going to assume that's him. Snaps up, little high, gets it off. Sky high. Sky high takes a bounce at the 33 and recovered by number 24 of the Timberwolves, Terry and Tanner. And Union Pines will take over on the Timberwolves 31 yard line. What a great first drive for the Union Pines defense there. Really did a good job containing the Timberwolves and they get phenomenal field position. Absolutely. So you, if you're Truesdale and the offense from Union Pines, you definitely want to be able to put points up quickly, especially with this great field position. 
Looks like Union Pines is coming up in a stack formation. No wide receivers out, double tight ends, three backs. Number nine, Finkelstein under center. We looks like we'll have an encroachment on the defense. That penalty appeared, I missed a number on that. 69. 99, we don't have that number. Um, nonetheless, fall start on number 99 of the Timberwolves. That'll bring a first and five for the Vikings. Fourth penalty on the Timberwolves. Fourth penalty after almost as many consecutive plays. Union Pines back under a stack formation. Hand off to, looks like he got up to about the 21 yard line. Looks like Union Pines is gonna try to power the ball here. That run was made by number 32, Russ Shaper from the Union Pines Vikings. Looks like he got about nothing there. Nope, oh, they're moving the chains. I missed that one completely. Looks like it'll be first and 10 on the 21 yard line. Not quite in that remax, remax red zone, but they're getting there pretty quick. This is not the wide zone offense that Jason Truesdale told me they were gonna run. So as always, coach never shows his hand early. Carry by, by Shaper again. About three yards. About three yards. Russ Shaper on the carry. He's a senior running back, 5'8", 186 pounds. And I think that might be a little bit undervalued there. Usually you see statistics on rosters and you think they, uh, they, they might be a little inflated. I think that one might be a little underflated there. He's, that is a big young man. And we'll talk a little bit more about the weight room and, and the Vikings as we continue on through the night. Union Pines getting up under center for a second and eight here. Snap is up, handed back to Shaper. He continues to drive, but we do have a flag down from the side judge on the near side, right at the 19 yard line. I have a feeling it's gonna be false start. That's usually where that, where that flag comes from early. The Zebras are talking about it. It was a very good game by Shaper to make a third and five. Absolutely, when you start getting on this side of the field, expect to see more of that. Expect to see more power, absolutely. You know, that old adage from, you know, that old adage from, uh, who was it that was supposed to run the ball? Seattle, weren't they? Yes, Seattle, you Marshawn know, Lynch. Run the dang ball, right? <laughs> Isn't that the age-old Pete Carroll? Uh, Absolutely. Pete Carroll wasn't his, wasn't his saying because he might should have run the ball. But nonetheless. Field gets shorter, inches get harder. That's right. Prior to the snap. Prior to the snap encroachment. encroachment on the defense. Can't be encroachment on the offense. <laughs> well, as we were talking earlier, the, this is the first game of the year for the Zebra crew as well. A little bit of trial and error. Defense. Encroachment on the defense. There you go. White Hat's got it this time. <laughs> this is a fun thing about having the referees, Mike. Do we get to hear all sorts of things from them? There we go. This should become a third and short situation, second and short situation for the Vikings. White Hats getting back set up, getting ready to blow this call. Well, sorry, getting ready to blow this ball, ready to go. There's some communication there back and forth. There it is, start the play clock. Union Pines, oh, we get, we're getting some shifty going on. Number 14, Ethan Biggs has the ball. He has some green space. He's dynamic, that's a Union Pines touchdown. down. Number 14, Ethan Biggs. That is the first of many we will see this year from Ethan Biggs. That was a power set toss just to the wide side of the field. Union Pines beat the Timberwolves to the edge. And once you get Ethan Biggs the ball in space, there's not many teams that's gonna be able to bring him down. Great cut by that young man. Good to see him back healthy. That makes it a 6-0 Vikings lead. We have 825 left in the first. We're getting ready to see a PAT, so it'll be an untimed down. Kicker forgot he was supposed to kick PATs. Number six, John Cannon on to kick the PAT. Number 18, the holder. Kick is up and kick is good. Here we are, 7 0 here with your Union Pines Vikings ahead of Montgomery Central Timberwolves. Union Pines going to kick off in one minute. We will be right back. 
Buy, buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. Union Pines about to kick off number six, John Cannon. Back for the Timberwolves is number 24, Terry and Tanner. Terry and Tanner, and number two, Natavis Powell. Kick is back to about the 10 yard line. Received by Tanner. By Tanner. He's got this young man is dynamic. He's got one man to beat. He's got to beat the kicker. Oh, tripped up, tackled right at the 39-yard the the line there. This Union Pines Vikings uh, special team's not the best. Tackled by number 32. Sorry, tackled by number 23, Austin Mooring from the Vikings. Whoa, that was a dangerous kickoff by the Vikings. And Montgomery Central really needed to see that because up to this point it had been a perfect start for Union Pines. As we talked about before the game, they needed to get Ethan Biggs in space, and that's exactly what they did to score that touchdown. Absolutely. Union Pines coming out looking strong. This this kickoff, though, we're going need, to gonna need a little bit of work. That's two big big re returns from the Timberwolves. But nonetheless, the Timberwolves coming back in a two-back set with your doubles receivers to the short side of the field, led by number five, Evan Lucas. 14's in motion to the wide side. Looks like we've got inside zone handoff. Number nine on the carry. We do have a flag down right in the area. Your far judge threw his flag right in the holding uh, area. So that's what I would assume this penalty will be. If that's on Montgomery Central. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. There we go. That's five on Montgomery Central. That is five penalties for Montgomery Central. That was an illegal motion. Number 14. Had his shoulders turned a little too early. Seneca Lowry, for all of our fans at home, your shoulders must stay parallel to the line of scrimmage until the ball is snapped. So he turned up a little too early. So that will bring up a first and 15 for the Timberwolves. Two back set. 14 is back in the slot on the, on the sideline side of the field, on your far side of your screen. Back. Quick pass to number 24. Terry and Tanner. Terry and Tanner taken down at the 39 by number two, Damian Bean, linebacker for the Vikings. 38, brought it back to the short side of the field, so all of our fans at home. Timberwolves are again in yellow, going right to left. And expect to see more passes like that out of this Timberwolves offense. Absolutely. When you're calling an offense and starting to run an offense, if you're kind of having a, a, a time sputtering right to start, what do you do? You get quick passes, get the ball in space, let your athletes be athletes. Union Pines here in a 4-4 defense with cover three over the top. Five is the handoff to number nine again, Brenton, Brandon Powell. So he's a senior, or sorry, sophomore running back for the Timberwolves. He's 5'10", 180. So we'll bring up third and five here. I will say I'm a little surprised we're not seeing any veer out of Chris Metzger. Maybe, he, uh, maybe he's starting to abandon the veer a little bit. Nonetheless, exciting offensive run. Two back set. Your doubles receivers to the wide side of the field. Looks like some option. Pitch to number one, Javari Chapel, Kappel, for about a one-yard gain. This will bring up a fourth and four for the Timberwolves. Looks like they've got a decision to make. I would assume they're not going to punt the ball here. Looks like number five looking over to the sidelines for the call. I sure do miss the huddle, Seth. <laughs> I'm old school. I played wing T. I sure daggum miss the huddle. The game's changing. The game, you know, the older I get, the more I realize that. <laughs> so, looks like looks like the Timberwolves 
brought a receiver in to took him off, put a tight end in. Looks like they're going to run power. Number nine, Powell yep. gets nowhere. Union Pines Viking defense with the stop. Number 22 on the tackle, Damon Bremer on the tackle here. The Vikings offense will take over on their own 36-yard line. So two stalls on the first two series for the Timberwolves. Can't be too excited about that. Let's see what their defense does now. I would imagine they're going to start leaning on number 20, Aiden Allsbrook, their preseason All-State linebacker. And, you know, we came into this game talking about the Union Pines offense, but the Union Pines defense has really showed out thus far. Absolutely. Union Pines defense really coming on strong. Jason Truesdale, the head coach, was a defensive coordinator there in years past. So with a defensive mind, you would expect to have a pretty good defense to start the year off. Union Pines a different formation here with the short stubbles with a, with a bandit. A little bit high snap. Number nine keeps the ball. Tackled by number 99 from the Montgomery Central in the backfield. I apologize for all our viewers at home. We don't have a number on him. That is a five-yard loss. Sorry, six-yard loss. Take him all the way back to their own 30-yard line. This will make a second and 16 for the Vikings. I would expect here, if I was calling this offense, to see Ethan Biggs get a ball in some sort of screen or motion to try to get him outside pretty quickly. But huge stop there on first down for the Vikings. I tell you, it's hard when you're calling an offense, having done it myself, it is hard when you have a negative gain on the first down. You really want a second and third and manageable. Second and 16 is hard to recover from. And that really underscores the importance of communication between the center and the quarterback. When you have a high snap like that, mistakes Quarter can happen. Quarterback's keeping the ball. It's got to the edge. Has a first down. Taken all the way out to the 48-yard line here. Our side judges are not quite lined. There we go, 48-yard line. They're still on their half of the field. But nonetheless, that is a Union Pines first down brought to you by Shed Depot for all of your prefab shed needs. Union Pines Vikings coming out with a first and 10 now. That was just a power sweep with a quarterback. That's all that was. So very strong play there by Union Pines. Jason Truesdale, when I was talking to him earlier today, was talking about how much time the Vikings spent in the weight room this year. Handoff to number Number nine, Brandon Powell, he gets a gain of one there for the Vikings. Back to Jason Truesdale in the weight room. He talked about how hard they worked throughout the offseason on their weight room. And I will tell you, for those of you at home watching, from remember the Vikings from last year to this year, they look like a much stronger, bigger team. Um, and as we get into conference play, and we'll talk about the conference later on in the, in the broadcast, they're going to need all the power they can get. So, Great job by the Vikings. This brings up a second and nine here for your Union Pines Vikings. Getting set up. Looks like we're going to have two receivers to the wide side of the field with a wing set up on the short side. There's your tunnel. 14, Ethan Biggs makes one miss. Oh, doesn't get past the second. Looks like a tackle for a loss there, taken down at the 47. Tackle by number 10, uh, Gerald Stanback of the Timberwolves. That'll bring up a third and 11 for your Union Pines Vikings. Excellent read by the Montgomery Central defense as well. Excellent read. You are 100% correct, Seth. Great job there by um, the Timberwolves really really moving to the ball, really flowing with the ball. Re read well. Not a great throw by Finkelstein of the, of the Vikings. And here we are. We've got trips to the wide side, one to the short side. He's got to get set. There he is. Finkelstein back, three-step drop, lets the ball fly. He's going into Intercepted. Cover. Intercepted by number seven uh, of the Timberwolves. He's still on his feet. Tackle down there by Union Pines Vikings. Looks like number 18 on the tackle. Brendan Ortega, wide receiver, cornerback for the Vikings, makes the tackle. Number seven on the interception there for the Timberwolves. Great response by the Timberwolves defense. Absolutely. Just what we were talking about earlier. They got punched first, and they responded. Very, you're 100% right. We did have a flag for an illegal formation. I have a feeling they had not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Nonetheless, the Timberwolves will decline that penalty, and uh, I think they'll take the interception. I think I would take that 99 out of 100 times myself. So, great defensive stand there by the Timberwolves, and their offense is going to take over on their own 31-yard line, looking to put points up here. 
303 left in the first quarter. Luckily here in, in Troy, North Carolina, we have a beautiful video board to watch. Under center for the Timberwolves. Looks like some miscommunication on, oh, 14's open. Oh! oh. Hard over the shoulder throw to catch. Just Seneca bobbled Lowry. there by number 14, Seneca Lowry. Oh, he had some green space too. If he catches that ball in stride, I think he still might be running. Nonetheless, great play call there by the Timberwolves to uh, take a chance there on first down. I, I love the aggressiveness there. Ah, boy, I thought he was going to catch that. He was going to be running for green. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nonetheless, second and 10 here on the 31-yard line for the Timberwolves. Number five, Evan Lucas is getting the, the play in from head coach Chris Metzger. Two back set. We have doubles formation to the short side of the field. Snap is back. Fake handoff. We got a shovel pass to number nine. Brandon Powell of the Timberwolves taken out right at the 40-yard line. Looks like we're going to have third and one here for the Timberwolves. I'd expect to see some sort of power coming in underneath here to get the first down. Nonetheless, third and one. This is the first really third and close for the Timberwolves um, tonight, and I do believe this is their first first down. And this is a big down for the Timberwolves. They've uh, stalled out the last two possessions, trying to get some positive momentum. This would be huge for them to convert right here. Absolutely. Union Pines here showing eight gap blitz. Ooh, could be showing double eight gap blitz. And they do. And number nine, Brandon Powell taken down for no gain here at the 40 yard line. Will bring up a fourth and one on their own 40. Now, this is an interesting situation here. We watched a punt earlier um, from the Timberwolves, and it did not go swimmingly. And so it'll be interesting to see here what we see from the Timberwolves. It doesn't look like any movement on the sidelines. They're going to take a chance on fourth and one. Be interesting to see the play that Uni Pines comes up and calls on their defense. You can only blitz double A gap so many times before they get that ball outside quick. So it'll be interesting to see Lee County, uh, sorry, Union Pines here in a 4-3, cover one. Quarterback keep, looks like he's up to the 44. That is a Timberwolves first down brought to you by Shed Depot. Got to get our sponsor calls in for him. As always, as one of our producers, Brandon Hillis there, shaking his head, giving me a thumbs up. Always thankful to him and Tim Copas and all of our crew that helps us out. So that'll be Timberwolves first down on the 44, 43-yard line. 212 left in the first quarter here. Snaps back. We got a pitch. He's got some green grass. Nothing but space. Nothing but space. Number one, Javari Chapel on the carry all the way down to the Union Pines Vikings 40-yard line. That is a big gain of 16 for the Timberwolves. And this is their first time in Union Pines territory here. So Chris Mesker and his group of guys definitely looking to capitalize here. And in good Top Gun fashion with old Tom Cruise, we're listening to a little bit of danger. Absolutely. absolutely. And don't forget, another Shed Depot first down. And another Shed Depot first down. You're absolutely right, Seth. Thank you for picking me up on that one. Timberwolves under center. Double receivers to the short side of the field. Number one headed to Javari Chapel again, taking down about the 38-yard line for a two-yard gain. Tackle by your Union Pines Vikings, number seven, Christopher Gilbert on the tackle. So very good first down play for the Timberwolves. Brings up second and eight here. Chris Metzger calling it in. Always good to see him back on the sideline. And I will say, constant professional with his tie on. I've never seen the man coach a football game without his tie on. Always a constant professional. Number five, Evan Lucas. Back to receive. Back in shotgun formation with double backs. Looks like we're going to run another option again. Ball given to number one, Javari Chapel, Taken down at the 47-yard line for a gain of one. This will bring down a third and seven. Sorry, side judge was a little off. Now it is on back to the 48. So no gain on that play. Third and eight, 40 seconds left in the first quarter. I would anticipate this being the last play of the quarter. Wouldn't be surprised if they threw something quick to get one of their slot receivers or running backs in space. Absolutely. Looks like they're going to run trips to the wide side of the field. I would expect to see some sort of bubble or tunnel coming from the Timberwolves. But I've been known to call plays wrong. So We can't all be Tony Romo. Back. We can't be Tony Romo. 
Ball's back, five, Evan Lucas lets it rip. Ball bounces off the ground, incomplete pass to number 24. Terry and Tanner. Terry and, Tan, Terry and Tanner, Tanner of the Timberwolves. That brings down a fourth and eight. And it does appear number 30, their punters coming back on to the field. John Hernandez Vargas, I would assume they're going to let this play out. And we'll go to a commercial after the clock hits double zeros, and we'll be back for this bunt after the break. So let's check and make sure we've got eight seconds left. Not sure why they stopped the clock. Oh, it's incomplete pass, duh. They always <laughs> stop the clock at incomplete pass. Vargas back to kick. A little bit better. Looks like that ball is going to bounce about the 29-yard line. Bounce up, caught the 30 by number 30, Vargas himself. That is the end of the first quarter. This is the NFHS Game of the Week brought to you by Le Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. We'll be back for the second quarter. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Welcome back to Troy, North Carolina. This is the beginning of the second quarter here, the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential, Residential and Commercial Construction. Number 14, Ethan Biggs going in motion. Union Pines starting over on their 29-yard line, 30-yard line. Snap bobble, number nine, keeps it on the carry, taken down at about the 32-yard line. That's number nine, Ben Finkelstein. Bobbled snap, looked like a low snap, got bobbled. He didn't get the play that he wanted, did a smart move, got the ball upfield, ended up for a gain of two. This will bring up second and eight for the Vikings. Great recovery by Finkelstein there to take a potentially disastrous play and get some positive yards out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a hard thing to teach a 16, 17, 18-year-old. If, if, if things get sideways, just pick the ball up, run north-south, get what you can, and get down. Union Pine second and eight here, 99 from from. <coughs> Oh, tackle there made in the backfield by number 25 of the of the uh, Timberwolves on Russ Schaefer. There we go, Mr. Schaefer on on the on the tackle there. Union Pines will come up for a third and eight again. No gain on that play. Number 99 for the Timberwolves really doing a good job busting through that line of scrimmage. Be sure to watch as he progresses through the night. And this is exactly where Montgomery Central wants to be on defense, forcing Union Pines into uncomfortable third and eight situations. Third and eight situations are always hard. You're dead on right on that, Seth. Fingerstein back in a pistol formation. Running back lines up to beside him. We got a stack of trips. Looks like Fingerstein's going to keep it. He's got a little bit of green grass taken down right at the 40. Depends on the spot. Depends on the spot. This will be close. Side judges call in first down. We'll see. We haven't seen an official motion yet. Oh, white hat in the background calling first down. That is your Union Pines first down brought to you by Shed Depot. He's signaling to continue the clock. We will get that rock and roll. Union Pines going back to the huddle. God, I love to see the huddle. I love to see the huddle now. Back for a first down on their own 40. Finkelstein running a power quarterback sweep there. Getting to the outside, getting what he needed for the first down. Finkelstein back under center. Hands off for an outside zone carry by number 32. Russ Schaefer. Russ Schaefer of the Vikings taking down about the 42-yard line, 41-yard line. Let's see where they end up. Between the 40. We do have a flag on the play. Let's see what this turns out to be. 
right in the area of holding. So I would expect to see a first and 19 on that. Let's see what White Hat calls. Holding, holding on the Vikings. And that is, that's such a hard call. That, that's such a hard call to make for, a, for an ump. And then it's a super hard call as a coach to get a holding penalty because holding penalties, unlike procedure penalties such as offsides, false starts, or whatnot, are spot penalties. So that didn't hurt them as bad because they were already one yard up the field when they had the hold. So this will make a first and 19. But if you have that, if that hold two or three yards behind the line of scrimmage, boy, it turns bad real quick. Union Pines here lined up. Doubles formation to the wide side with a stack on the short side. Quick pass out to number 14, Ethan Biggs. Low throw by Finkelstein could not be held by number 14, Ethan Biggs. We saw some athleticism there in his uh, the karate jump up, as, as I don't know what it's officially called, but always athletic Ethan Biggs. Just a little low for him. The Timberwolves defense doing a really good job covering him up. Looks like they have a man spying him when he goes in motion, and a safety was coming over the top there, so I wouldn't have assumed that to be a completely dynamic play. Um, Montgomery Central doing a good job adopt, adapting to that quickly. Finkelstein back, ball in Big's hands, number 14. He's fighting for his life, gets a gain of nothing there. It'll bring up a third and 19. Number four on the tackle, Navari Har Harris on the tackle for the Timberwolves. And as a coach, this is not where you want your team to be on the field, playing behind the chains in a third and very long situation going to be interesting to see what they dial up here if they go for it all or if they play it conservative i tell you seth when i was calling offenses i had a third and third third and short which was third and three and less i had those plays scripted out i had a third and medium which is third you know three year three yards to eight yards for your medium length plays and you have a script for those but i tell you third and 19 there's not a lot of plays for that white hat calling a uh calling a stop play. I'm assuming it's going to be a timeout. Timeout for the Timberwolves. So we're going to take a quick break here from our sponsor. We'll be back on the other side of this timeout. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. We're here in Troy, North Carolina, 9-15 left in the second quarter. Your New Pines Vikings up 7-0 on the Montgomery Central Timberwolves, but they're in a bad situation here with third and 19. Number four in motion, runs trips to the short side of the field. We've got a toss. We've got some green grass. Ethan Biggs on the carry. He's turning upfield, taken out of the 39-yard line, 38-yard line. That is nowhere near first down. This will bring up a fourth and 11 here for the Vikings, I would assume, to watch John Cannon come on and be the punter. does appear we're having a squad change here for your Vikings Makes on this fourth and 12 this deep into their own territory. This very easily could become a possession ball game here, Seth, where you know you don't want to give up good field position early. We saw Montgomery Central do it with a not phenomenal punt um, on their first possession. Union Pines goes on to, to put points up. So this could be a ball game of field position here. So it could be interesting to see how this all plays out. Absolutely. You want to kick it as far as you possibly can in this situation. Absolutely. So the snap is back. Cannon back to kick it. Oh, oh, punts deflected here by Montgomery. Still getting a pretty good bounce. Union Pines starting to huddle around it, starting to huddle around it. Where is it going to stop? That will be a Union Pines recover at the 27-yard line there by number nine. Well, nope, definitely not number nine. We do have a flag down on the play, though. I don't know where this is going to be at. Let's see where White Hat has. This is in the land of blocking the back, but there was no one to block. 
holding on the Timberwolves' sixth penalty of the night? Yes. Sixth penalty of the night for the Timberwolves. That will move them back. That will not be a redo of fourth down for the Vikings. So they'll just move the ball back on the Timberwolves, start them farther back in their own territory. On a play where they almost blocked the punt, now they're getting pushed back to about the 20. Holding with a 10-yard penalty, moving them back to their own 17-yard line. Good eyes there. That's difference in young eyes and old eyes for those of you at home. So that, that's hard. You, you know, you're right. Timberwolves, get a, get a hand on the, on the punt. Don't completely deflect it, but definitely knock some off of it. And then you get a holding penalty on a, on a very obvious play that wasn't going to go anywhere. That's hard to swallow. Timberwolves there with a, with a quick pop pass, number 24. Terry Union Ponds Tanner. starting to swarm. Terry Tanner on the reception there. Quick, quick little out. Number 20 on the, on the tackle for the Union Pines. Brody Trannel on the tackle. Linebacker coming out from the inside position. Sorry, outside position. Nonetheless, great swarming by Union Pines Vikings to get that stop. Brings up a second and seven for the Timberwolves. Snap is back. Hands off. Oh, we got a shovel past nine. He's got some more green grass. Got room. Got room. Oh, ball's on the ground. Union Pines Let's, recovered. Union Pines is, be, is recovered, according to Seth. And we've got a side judge calling it Union Pines ball. That recovery was by number 11, Harley Moyer. Sorry, number 71 from the Union Pines Vikings. We don't have that number, so we apologize to his parents who didn't get his name called out. But nonetheless, Vikings ball there at, there at the Timberwolves. 32. 32-yard line. Great field position for the Vikings. Definitely want to get points up on the board this time, make it a two-possession two ball game for the Vikings. 8-19 left in the second quarter. And if you remember, Nathan, on that touchdown Union Pine scored, they started at the 31-yard line. So this could potentially be a huge possession for them. Absolutely. And on the counter side, huge possession for the Timberwolves. You do not want to go down two possessions early. Number carry number 22, Damon Bremer, Bremer on the carry. He's a senior running back, 6'2, 220. Gets about two on the carry. I missed the tackle for the Timberwolves, so I apologize for those numbers. But nonetheless, huge first down there for the Vikings. Would have wanted a little bit more. Brings up a second and eight, though. Loading back up in their power set. Quarterback under center, Finkelstein under center, three back set. More power coming forward. Looks like he's going to go all the way up to the 28-yard line. It'll bring up third and about six here for the Vikings. Shaper on the carry for the Vikings. Tackle by number 10 for Montgomery Central, Jameis Collins. Free safety coming up to make that tackle. This is a huge down. Third and six could go either way. What do you call here, Seth? If, if, if you're calling this offense, what do, you, what do you call here? I'm getting bigs in space. You're getting bigs in space. Be interested to see what Ryan Giggy and his offensive crew here is going to call out. Union Pines staying in their power formation set. Double tight ends, hand to number 32. Rush. He looks like he's getting taken down by number 28. Again, don't have a number for him. Russ Shaper on the carry brings up a fourth and... Six here, looks like he had a gain of nothing on that play. Union Pines definitely not going to take any chances here on punting this ball. And it's going to definitely stay on the field here, which I agree with 100%. They're on the Timberwolves 28-yard line. I'd be surprised if they went power again in this situation. Well, you had your first missed call here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I've had about 20 million of them. Oh, Timberwolves jump off sides. That's penalty number seven of the night. Huge. This huge penalty for the Timberwolves have to play disciplined football here, especially in a fourth down situation. We used to call that the go-go play when I was coaching. Everyone get up, get set, get real still. We'd go on a, on a go-go. If they didn't jump, we'd call a timeout. Nonetheless, this brings up fourth and one. Side judge is, is blowing it dead here, talking to White Hat. And we do have a flag back on the 31-yard line that people seem to be confused about. So I'm not sure what this situation is. 
was the side judge's flag that came out. Sideline warning for the Union Pines. That won't affect anything this time. If you get too many sidelines warning, it does become a personal foul, make it a 15-yarder. Going to reset the play clock as the White Hat calls. Now clock will start. 5.56 and counting down. Union Pines quarterback Keith Finkelstein looks like oh, he's snuck through. Snuck all the way through. Touchdown, Union Pines. Touchdown number nine, Ben Finkelstein. I had no idea where he was. But he snuck all the way through the Timberwolves defense there. That makes it 13-0 for your Union Pines Vikings. Woo, what a play. Fourth and one. Quarterback sneak up, up a gap, just bulldozes all the way through. He's, he looked like Houdini on that play. He looked like Houdini. Number six, John Cannon on back for the PAT. Again, this is an untimed down. Number six, kick is up. Kick is good. That makes it 14 nothing. Union Pines. 5.47 left to go in the second quarter. We'll hear from a, a word from our sponsor and be right back after the break. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. If you've Welcome been injured back. in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation Law is firm free. Ad. Make sure you go see Krista Lambert in Sanford, North Carolina. This is the NFHS Game of the Week. Kickoff by John Cannon. Taken all the way down to the 20. Whoa! That ball hit the 27-yard line and died. I thought for sure that ball was going to go out. Nonetheless, the Timberwolves go to recover it. It shoots out of bounds, so no harm, no foul there. But good spot kick by the Vikings. I'm not sure if that was planned or not, but woo wee, that was a dangerous kick there for the for the Timberwolves. I think that's your situation avoided. That's right. You know, a lot of times you're you're worried that you know that ball's that ball's just going to hit and die, much like it did. And then Union Pines has the time to recover it. Um, depending on how good your special teams is and depending on how long you've been coaching it, you don't usually see it this early in the season. Um, but you can spot kick and drop balls in spots, and, and, and it becomes a real chance to win ball games. Nonetheless, Timberwolves taking over two-back set. Number five, Zach Lewis on the, on the um, quarterback slot. Number 14 on the carry. About seven yards up to the 37-yard line, the Timberwolves. Number five, sorry, number five at quarterback. I don't know why I botched that one as always. Evan Lucas, I wasn't even close. Seneca Lowry on the carry there gets six. So big first down there for the Timberwolves. Brings up a second and four here. Two back set, back under center for the Timberwolves. Lucas fakes it, rolling. Looks like a quarterback keep. Swallowed up by a swarm of, of Vikings, led by number 20 on the tackle. Brody Trannel read that the entire way. Number 22 also in on the tackle, Damon Bremer. Uh, his helmet came off, which means he has to come off the field for a play. So that young man is going to get a nice word of get your helmet strapped up. Nonetheless, tackle for a loss for the Vikings brings up a third and six here. Lucas under center. Hands off to number 24. Terry and Tanner. Terry and Tanner wrap, loss, wrapped, loss one. wrapped up by the Vikings with a loss of one. Number 71 on the tackle. That will bring up a fourth and long for the Timberwolves, and we have the punk crew coming right back on. Tough, tough start here for the for the Timberwolves offense. Down 14-0, 432 left in the second quarter in the first half. Um Going to be tough to come back. I would assume Union Pines is going to 
run the ball, try to run this, this clock out and maintain the lead going into halftime. Just not an ideal possession right there by the Timberwolves. Not only did they go three and out, but they also put their quarterback in a precarious situation toward the sideline. Booming punt there by number 31, John Hernandez Vargas. Ball was received by the Vikings, taken down on their own 24-yard line. Man, I don't know where that punt came from, um, but holy smokes, that was a boomer. Tackle made by number 23, from Montgomery Central, Isaiah Davis, who's a sophomore running back. So getting some time and some reps in on special teams there. So good job for that young man. We're going to rock and roll and just keep right on through this. 4.02 left in the second quarter. What a punt. Where did that come from? Yeah, major improvement over his first two efforts. Major improvement. So nonetheless, Vikings first down on their own 25-yard line. I would expect to see some run of the ball there. Back lined up under their power set here with three backs under center. We've got a shift. You can't do that. You can't shift two men at one time. So that will be an illegal procedure here for the Vikings. That will bring up first and 15. You can't do that, Seth. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. You could in arena football. And you could in that other football league that happened in the spring. I don't remember what was it, U.S. football. Um, USFL? USFL, but I don't Maybe. believe you can do that in high school football. Not in North Carolina, that's for not sure. Not in North Carolina and not in Texas, the only two <laughs> states I've coached high school football in. So that brings up a first and 15 for the Vikings. Back under center. There, we did it again. Whoa. White Hat, for, <laughs> White Hat forgot to uh, cut his microphone off. False start. Oh. And this is not the direction Union Pines wants this, to be moving. This is the wrong direction for your Union Pines Vikings. This will bring up a first and 20 situation. Whoo, that is rough, rough, rough for the Vikings. That will bring them all the way back to their 15-yard line. Um, I would expect, well, we're back in the same formation. Power set, two backs already lined up without the shift. And handoff to number 32. Nope, sorry, number 14, Ethan Biggs. Needs to get vertical pretty quick, making people miss. Didn't get much room there. Looks to be about the 21-yard line. N number seven in on the tackle there, Christopher Gilbert. Oh, nope, sorry, wrong roster. Number seven on the tackle for the Timberwolves. I don't have that number. Um, that'll bring up a second and 20 again. And that's a situation where you want to tell your player to try to get north and south more than east-west. Absolutely. Ethan Biggs is a dy dynamic player, but he's not going to make all 11 miss. I've never, I've seen some great football players in my life, and I've never seen someone make all 11 miss. Not with only 30 <laughs> yards of space. <laughs> not with that much space. So Finkelstein back under center on their own 20-yard line in their power set again. He's rolling. He's got 22 in space. 27. Oh, ball was broken up. Number 27 on the attempted reception there for the Vikings. Um, ended up playing DB more than he did wide receiver. Finkelstein underthrew that ball qu quite a bit. Um, and, and number 27 had to go in and break it up for him. Dangerous pass. Dangerous pass there for the Vikings. If he puts a little bit more oomph on that ball, though, he had some green space. So you gotta, you got to air that ball out. Nonetheless, this brings up a third and 20 for the Vikings. Be interesting to see if they go conservative again like they did the last time they were in a third and 20 situation. I would expect this deep in their own territory on their own 15-yard line that they would go conservative and punt the ball, run some clock off. Quarterback rolls again. Throw it to 22. There's number 22 on the reception. Damon Brimmer. Gets all the way up to the 24-yard line. On the field. And we have another flag from the side judge. Number 10 on the tackle for the Timberwolves, Jarrell Stanback, the strong safety. We've called his name a couple of times tonight, being all over the motion for the Vikings. So let's see what they call it here. White hat. He's getting the penalty in from the side judge. Oop, I missed it. Let's, for all of our viewers at home, I apologize. I was going back and forth between the TV and the live stage, and I missed it. 
So let's see what it is. It's right at, the penalty is right at the 24-yard line. So it could be in the territory of a block in the back, maybe? Let's see what we have. Or an illegal man downfield. Block in the back. On the offense, penalty is declined. So this will bring down a fourth and 11 for the Timberwolves, and I would assume the Vikings will punt it off. So great stand there by the Timberwolves defense with a punt. Uh, Timberwolves are back. Number two is back for the Timberwolves. Now, Tavis Powell is their punt returner. His heels are right at the 49-50 yard line. So this will put them in good position with 336 left to go in the in the first half. John Cannon back to kick the ball for the Vikings. And this is huge because remember, up. Union Pines gets the ball to start the second half. Union Pines does get the ball. Booms it all the way to the 41-yard line. Powell on the carry, miss, making people miss. Ended up being tackled there by number nine, Finkelstein. On, on Ben Finkelstein on the tackle. That's your quarterback on your punt team. Interesting decision there. Nonetheless, he makes a good open field tackle right about 39-yard line. So with 3.26 left to go in the second quarter, Union Pines defense is going to see if they can get a stand here on the Timberwolves. Timberwolves trying to make this a one-possession ball game because you're right, Union Pines gets the ball beginning of the second half. Pretty dynamic, interesting, interesting series here. Yeah. Very good opportunity for Montgomery Central to try to get some points on the board. You do not want to start the second half down two scores and give Union Pines a chance to add on to that. Absolutely. You do not want to go down three three possessions. So Timberwolves back into a doubles formation to the wide side of the field. Number 13 on the reception. That is Preston Gaberti on the reception. Or Rechavius Jameson. I'm assuming it's Rechavius Jameson on the reception there. Gets about five on, on the quick pass from Lucas. That brings up second and five, and he got out of bounds, so that stops the clock. So good clock manage, management there for the Timberwolves. You also want, don't want to uh, create a situation where Union Pines could get the ball back with a chance to score right before halftime, too. Absolutely, absolutely. So Lucas back under center. And hands off. We do have another flag on the short side. Number one on the carry, Javari Chapel, taken down all the way at the 44-yard line. 71 on the tackle for the Vikings. But we do have a flag way back at the 44-yard, sorry, 48-yard line. Illegal formation on the Timberwolves. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. You got to have seven. You can't have six. That's a fact. So, nonetheless, that will march them back. That'll take them back to their own 40. And that will bring up a second and nine situation. Is that the seventh penalty of the That's night? That's the eighth, That's by the, my count. The eighth penalty of the night for the Timberwolves. So, tough first half for the Timberwolves here in Troy, North Carolina, at their home stadium. That's just stunning for those of you at home. Doubles formation to the wide side. Quick bubble pass, 16, lays down a block. Oh, number 13 on the reception, lost his footing. Number 13, Rechavius Jamison um, got tripped up. His knee hit the, hit the ground. There was a swarm of Vikings coming to get him, though. So quick defense for the Union Pines Vikings. The clock is still ticking. 2.52 left to go in the first, third and long for the Timberwolves. You're right, big possession here. Um, be interested to see if Union Pines uses a timeout to stop this clock after this play. After this play, I'd anticipate about 22 minutes and 25 to 20 seconds left. Um, be interested to see if Union Pines calls a timeout if this play isn't a stopped clock. Lucas steps up, lets it fly. Oh, oh, chance for an interception from the Vikings. Number 18 on the breakup, Brendan Ortega for the Vikings. That ball was up for the taking. He just had a hard time holding on. That does stop the clock, though, with two minutes and 25 seconds left for the Timberwolves to punt it off. So the Vikings have plenty of time left to put up another, another score before the end of the half. Huge effort by the Vikings defense on that possession. Huge effort. You're exactly right. Good coverage break up there by the Vikings. That ball was aired out with plenty of time for Ortega to go break it up. I thought he was going to snag it out of the air. So num number 30 back to kick. Last time he had a boomer. This time another booming punt 
for the Timberwolves. Ball hits and bounces, bounces all the way down to the Vikings 22 yard line. So the Vikings will have the ball with first and 10 with two minutes, 14 seconds left to go in the half on their own 22 yard line. Interesting situation here for the Vikings. Um, with a lead, 14-0, you don't want to get too crazy and put too much risk out there to end the half. You don't want something disastrous to happen. At the same time, you want points up. So, Seth, if you were calling this offense, would you uh, would you get would you get gutsy and, and throw the ball around a little bit, or would you uh, play it safe and, and run the clock out? I think I would create a couple of screen passes, maybe run the ball a little bit to the outside, try and see if you can break one. And then if you break one and you get toward about midfield, then you can start looking deeper into the playbook. Very nice, very nice. Looks like Union Pines is set up to throw the ball or run the ball here with two wide receivers to the field side. Finkelstein on the keep, carries it up to about the 26-yard line. That clock is still ticking, 2.07 left to go in the first half. Looks like Union Pines might be playing it a little bit safe here. Interesting dynamic here. Montgomery Central has two timeouts left, as does Union Pines. So if one of them is going to burn it to try to save the clock, they have the option. Chris Metzger talking to his defense, or sorry, talking to his offense, not really looking to call a timeout right now. 140 left. It's still clicking. Union Pines not taking any, ch any time. We've got eight seconds left on the play clock to get set and go. Five, four, three, two, one. They just get it off. Good quarterback play there by Finkelstein. He keeps it, holds it, gets upended, taken down right at the 31, 31, 32 yard line. It'll be close. Let's see where the spot is compared to the chains. I believe this is going to be a third and short. This brings up a third and less than one here for the Vikings. That clock still continues to click. 104 and clicking down as quickly as we can. Looks like Union Pines is going to go for the first down and then run the clock out to end the night. 12 seconds left on the play clock, and they're not even out of the huddle. Looks like they might run it all the way down and call a time. Whoa, sorry. We just reset the play clock. So ignore everything I just said. <laughs> Finkelstein under center. I expect them to take a knee here. Finkelstein runs up to, looks like he's got the first down. The pile's going to push. That leaves 30 seconds left on the clock. Clock will stop for them to reset the chains, and when White Hat calls it, the clock will start again. I don't see anyone down there looking to uh, call a timeout. Looks like this clock's going to run out all the way to – oh, we do have a timeout. Let's see who called the timeout. Timeout. Timeout Union Pine. So we've got – a first and 10 on their own 31-yard line. So we're going to take a quick break to hear from a sponsor, and we'll be back for the last 25 seconds of the first half. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. 25 seconds left to go. Finkelstein back. He's evading for his life. Let's the ball loose and incomplete. White had his call on saying his arm was going forward, so that will be an incomplete pass. That will bring up second and 10. If the clock operator is right, it will be 18 seconds left for a second and 10. I would assume we would watch them run the clock out to go into halftime with the lead. A dangerous situation right there for Union Pines. You don't want your quarterback to get hit. You also don't want to throw the ball up, especially when you could take this clock down to zero and have a 14-point lead at halftime. Aha, uh -huh. very, very true, very true. We did have a flag on the play. We had an intentional grounding on the Vikings. So it'll be a five-yard penalty. Sorry, 10-yard penalty. Five yard from the spot of the foul. Um, so that'll bring up a second and Nine, second and ten with a loss of down there. Second and nine for the Vikings with 18 seconds left to go. 
clock does start. I would assume we watch this clock run out, and the Vikings go into halftime with a lead. We're down to five seconds and counting. Don't seem to any urgency for the Vikings. And that is your first half. We are at Troy in, at, in Troy, North Carolina here at the home of the Montgomery Central Timberwolves. At halftime, you have your Union Pines Vikings 14, Montgomery Central Timberwolves 0. So we're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and be back for our halftime show. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. And welcome back to the halftime show here in Troy, North Carolina. Union Pines leading 14 0. I'm Blake Rogers stepping in here for the halftime show with Seth Hoyle. And I'll tell you some of the things I've noticed early on. Union Pines off to a big start. A lot of penalties for Montgomery Central. Seth, what are you seeing so far? Well, uh, coming into this game, we had talked about how it was going to be strength versus strength. Union Pines with a juggernaut offense versus Montgomery Central with a stonewall defense. Mm -hmm. So far, it hasn't been perfect for the Union Pines offense, but they've made just enough plays and been just explosive enough to get two touchdowns on the board. Yeah, a couple of those early opportunities for good field position really set them up to get a couple of short uh, opportunities to score some touchdowns here. This is our halftime show here presented by uh, King's Law Firm in Sanford. Uh, we got 14 nothing Union Pines over Montgomery Central. Some of the things that I noticed, Seth, and I know you were here in the booth watching, like we talked about the penalties, we talked about the issues. Not a lot of turnover so far. One interception, if I recall correctly, by Union Pines early, a misread by the quarterback. But so far it's been a lot of the ground game. There hasn't been a lot of air offense. Montgomery Central did go to the bubble screen early and often, and they had success on it, but yes. the penalties really stepped them back, and they weren't able to sustain any drives and a lot of three and outs, Seth. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they really had a lot of success throwing those quick little slot routes, uh, getting people in space, moving the ball. Every time uh, either team has gone deep, Ben Finkelstein, uh, he overthrew a ball, then underthrew a ball. Uh, I would really expect both offenses to go back to their bread and butter, try to get guys in space, quick, uh, quick passes, inside runs. That's where these teams have had success yeah. tonight. And it comes down to a lot of special teams' mistakes too early for Montgomery Central, having a hard time getting the ball 15, 15 yards down on a punt. The punter the last two times able to pin Union Pines back and yeah. keep them from that midfield position where, you know, go back to penalties, mistakes, fourth and six here, encroachment, fourth and one, quarterback sneak. You're not calling that on fourth and six, and he just slips right through the interior of the defense, right past the tackles, and scores a touchdown. And you could just see up here in the, in the booth here, the, uh, the box, the coaches from Montgomery Central really frustrated early, and they mentioned that several times to try to clean this up at halftime. I heard their over conversations about really knocking down the penalties and getting the special teams in order because they've had some really big kick returns too, but also called back for a flag. Absolutely, and they they are definitely winning the turnover battle with a margin of one to zero with the Union Pines throwing an interception. But they have had eight penalties in one half of football, yeah. five in the first quarter. That's not going to win. Yeah. And Union Pines with their fair share of penalties, too, especially toward the end. Some communication issues on the line with a couple of false starts. So you got to clean that up because if you're backed up, you know, it didn't hurt them too much here toward the end of the first half. But if you're backed up on the 10-yard line and you're getting false start penalties, you're putting your, you're asking a whole lot of your punter and your offense to go first and 20. And then when you do have to punt, you got a lot, not a lot of space back there to work with, Seth. Absolutely. And the for longer back there uh, your quarterback stays, the more in danger he is yeah. getting hit. So I'll tell you, we'll see if uh, Montgomery Central can put something together offensively because it's been a big-time struggle for them tonight. I'm looking to see a little bit more bubble screens. Some, you know, the, the running game for them has been very scarce. They've had a couple of opportunities, and when they do get that second and short, second and, you know, maybe mid to long, Penalty, penalty, penalty. So they got to cut that back out. I know we're beating a dead horse here, but it's the same thing all night long with them. You cannot expect your offense to overcome that every single drive. You can have one or two here and there, but when you're just backed up constantly, second long, third and long, it's not a very conducive formula for high school football. 
Absolutely. And we're talking about how the offenses have had some missteps, but I think we should also give some credit to these two defenses. They've played a pretty good game so far. Mm -hmm. Montgomery Central had a couple lapses that resulted in two uh, Viking touchdowns. But overall, they've played a solid, solid half worthy of winning a football game. Yeah. So, Seth, i tell you what I'm looking for here in the second half is for Union Pines to come out and keep their gas on the uh, gas on the foot on the pedal. Excuse me, I can't talk foot right now. Foot on the gas. Foot on the gas. There you go. And show them a little bit. That interior defense was really doing a good job. Yeah. The receivers for Montgomery was kind of getting some space there, and they were beating Union Pines a little bit. A lot of missed tackles early, but a good job of gang tackling. And when Union Pines would miss one or two, the other guys there to clean it up and prevent that huge – uh, gain that you're looking for because Montgomery Central what they really need is a couple splash plays they got to get out here early in the second half and really push to make a score because you go down third quarter halfway through it's 21 nothing 17 nothing and we've seen Union Pines their kicker has got a leg I mean he is a young stud and that extra point he kicked on this end here I mean it would have been good from 35 40 so you know you give them an opportunity to score in the red zone and you're really going to have a hard time uh, keeping up with them because we've seen Montgomery Central just not able to click anything together. Maybe coaching adjustments will change that in the second half, but from what I've seen so far, they're going to need a couple of big splash plays and quick to get the momentum back on their side. Absolutely, and I would look to their special teams unit to do that. They've had a couple good returns by number 24, Terry and Tanner, so far today. Maybe he can uh, rip one out and they can go from there. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's what we talked about. You know, a couple of the returns, the big plays that Montgomery Central had were kickoff returns and they weren't able to, you know, keep their hands out of the kitchen, so to speak, with those illegal block in the back. You had your illegal motions. You had your encroachment. So you name it, a penalty in football, Montgomery Central has had it. So their coaching staff is hoping that they've got it out of their system. Okay, first game of the year, and a little bit of nerves, a little bit of jitters, and these are high school kids we're talking about. They're not pro athletes, so they're going to make mistakes. But as a team, communication is what I'm looking for to see Montgomery Central really get back because it seems like they're not playing as a team, while Union Pines, they are playing as a team. Absolutely, and I would expect communications to get better on both sides of the ball for both teams. Uh, it is important to keep in mind this was the first half of football they played in eight months. Yeah, so it has been a slow start for Montgomery Central. Union Pines got off a little early, a little hot start. So we'll see if they can put some more points on the board. Once again, our halftime show here in Troy, North Carolina. Beautiful uh, stadium and facilities here that Montgomery Central has. It's an excellent, excellent football field. And 14-0 uh, Union Pines, Montgomery Central, zero. Once again, brought by King's Law Firm. And uh, we're going to wrap it up here, go to commercial, and we'll see you again to start the second half. Welcome to the NFHS Network's Halftime Show, brought to you by King Law and New Image Media. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Welcome to the NFHS Network's Halftime Show. Brought to you by King Law and new image media. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Welcome to the NFHS Network's Halftime. In a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. 
At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. If you Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. By your ne Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. 
Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Welcome back here to Troy, North Carolina. You are watching Montgomery Central Timberwolves take on the Union Pines Vikings from Cameron, North Carolina. Union Pines jumped out to a quick lead here, 14 0 in the first half. Timberwolves looking to respond. Timberwolves kicking off to the Vikings to start the second half. Booming punt there by number 30, John Vargas Hernandez. We have a touchback. First time I've seen a touchback this season and in quite a few seasons. So. Booming kick there by Mr. Vargas Hernandez. Huge shout out here to the Montgomery Central coaches getting us a, a roster. So we have quite a few apologies to send out to parents um, calling kids incorrect names. I, I greatly apologize here for all of us. Um, but huge shout out to your coaches for getting us right on the right path with a new varsity roster. So your quarterback is number five, James Andrews, not number five, Evan Lucas. Um, so the rest of the rest of most of the key players have, have been the same. So we will continue to get this right, I hope. Um, but huge shout out to the Montgomery Central Timberwolves coaching staff. So thank you to them. Finkelstein back. We got double receivers to the short side of the field. Handoff to number 32, Rush Shaper, swallowed up by a large group of Timberwolves. Tackle made by number 99, Aaron Ingram. That's a name that we should have been calling all night. Um, so huge shout out to Mr. Ingram. That is a big young man. Um, on, on that on that defensive tackle spot. So looking forward to watching him throughout the rest of the game. Union Pines gets no gain on first and 10 to start the second half. Let me fix this door here for us. And this is a huge possession right here for the defense of Montgomery Central because you do not want to go down three scores to start the second half. Absolutely. Union Pines drops back. Finkelstein on the move. Kicks it out to number 14. Ethan Biggs can't quite hold on. Ball's bubble, side judge calls it incomplete. We've got a late flag coming from the back judge here. We will see what this is. I hope this isn't a late hit. Um, that's usually in the territory of it, but yellow is clapping. Timberwolves are clapping, so it looks like it might be against your Union Pines Vikings. Let's see what White Hat calls. And still discussing it. The Timberwolves looking like they're going to progress back towards the Union Pines end zone. Step off. Let's After the play, personal foul on the Vikings. Half the distance to the goal. That makes a second and 20 for the Vikings. Huge penalty there for the Vikings. Not one that we see very often from the Union Pines Vikings. Head coach Jason Truesdale usually does a very good job of keeping his team disciplined. Nonetheless, these things happen. Bring up third and 20 for the Vikings. We still have doubles formation to the short side of the field. White Hats calling it dead. Let's see. Zebra Crew's going to talk about it. Let's see what we call. Ooh. Rough start to the second half Choppy already. Choppy start. Choppy start. Choppy start here for the Vikings. A good start for the first half to the second half for the Timberwolves. So let's wait and see. While we're waiting on the Zebra Crew, a couple of updates here. Sorry, correction, third down, as we already talked about. 
Um, at halftime, Lee County Yellow Jackets, what our crew is normally calling, is up on the Northwood. Are they the Stallions? I. Uh, some sort of equestrian, I so, believe. So, some sort, <laughs> some sort of that. Um, Lee County Yellow Jackets are up 33 to six. Union Pines gets a play out, brings it up back to the original line of scrimmage, back to the 20 yard line. That will bring up a fourth and ten on their own 20. And I would definitely assume they're going to punt the ball here. So good defensive start here for the Timberwolves. Absolutely, couldn't have scripted out on any. Couldn't have scripted it out any better if you're on the Montgomery Central coaching staff. Absolutely. Union Pine's going to punt this ball off here. Number six, John Cannon back to kick the ball off. Number two, Trey Chapel to receive the punt. Punts up. Good kick. Good kick here. Chapel will let it go. Takes a Union Pine's bounce. Union Pine's bounce down to the 42. To the 38, 37. Ah. <laughs> That's all right, brother. There's a camera blocking my field of vision. <laughs> There's a camera. That's all right. So the Timberwolves will take over on the 37-yard line, looking to put their first pos- first score up of the game, of the season, and of the second half. So definitely want to put points up here and make this a one-possession ball game here. 10-22 left to go in the third quarter. Couple of big big scores around the conference for our normal viewers there at home. Uh, Richmond County last night, playing on Thursday night due to potential weather tonight, goes down to Mount Tabor, 46 to seven. So Richmond County, not used to losing, gets a gets a pretty good shellacking on week one against Mount Tabor. Balls handed off to number one Javari Chapel. Runs all the way up to their own 46, 47 yard line, and that will be a Timberwolves first down brought to you by Shed Depot. And that's what we're looking to see more out of the Timberwolves offense. More chunk plays like that to get them down the field quicker. Very true, very true. Timberwolves getting back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Another handoff to number one, Javari Chapel. He's dancing, he's dancing. He gets all the way up to the 50-yard line for a gain of two. This will bring up second and eight for the Timberwolves. Quick plays here from the Timberwolves. Maybe we're going to see a little bit higher tempo. Number 22 for the Vikings goes out. Number 70 checks in. Be sure to see if they go back to their base 4-4 defense here. And it does appear that's what they're going to come in at. Base 4-4. Montgomery Central has two to the wide side or two to the field side. Um with two backs actually it's not to the field side because they're dead center so to the closest of of your screen hand off to number one javari chapel gets tripped up by shoelaces for a loss of one no sorry loss of four that will bring up a third and 11 here for the timberwolves it's plays like that that can kill a drive too Absolutely. Plays like that. There weren't a ton of Vikings around. They were they were flowing to the ball, but they had not broken the line of scrimmage yet to get tripped up there. And and what, what our viewers at home might not be able to see is this is a turf field. Um, turf fields are not something you see incredibly often here in high school football in North Carolina. And so it is running on turf, for those of you that have never done it, is very, very different than running on regular grass. Um, so you'll see it from time to time. Trips to the wide side of the field. One single receiver here. They've got tunnel, looks like number 11 on the reception. He's got room on his tunnel, couple of Vikings to beat. Gets all the way down to the 32 yard line. That reception by, did we get a number on that? I believe that was by number 14, Jaleel Christian of the Timberwolves. Great game there, sorry, number 11 of the Timberwolves, Brendan Weiss. Wide receiver for the Timberwolves. Great tunnel screen there to start this this uh, first down set. Brings all the way up to Union Pines territory on the 32-yard line. And we've got a flag on the play. Let's see what this is. False start on the Timberwolves. That makes number nine of the night, correct? Absolutely. Number, yep. number, number nine, nine of the night for the Timberwolves. You hate to see that after a good first play or a good play in the, in the last set. And uh, here you go. You start off this first down with a penalty. You absolutely hate to see that if you're the Timberwolves staff. Nonetheless, first and 15 here. They're still in very good position here at the Union Pines 35-yard line. 
Handoff to number 24, Anthony Ewing of the Timberwolves. Carries it all the way up to the, let's see where this is at, the 33-yard line. This will bring up a second and 12, approximately. We're going to have double receivers to the sideline. Two backs staying in their set. With a tight end lined up for the Timberwolves. I apologize, I haven't called that out all night. Andrews on the roll, dumps out to number 24, drops it, hit by a swarm of Vikings quickly, so that play probably wouldn't have gone much farther than the initial reception anyways. Nonetheless, incomplete pass, creating a third and 12 for the Timberwolves. 7.46 left to go in the first, or in the in the third quarter. I apologize. And you have to wonder with this field position if they might be thinking this is four down territory and they might try to get six yards twice as opposed to 12 yards once. There you go, Seth. If you if you're calling this offense here, Seth, tell tell us what a what a what your thought process would be. I would throw another one of those tunnel screens, see if you can break it. If you can't, then you might be able to pick up about six yards, and then you can go from there for a fourth down. There we go. There we go. Seth's calling a, a tunnel here. We've got trips to the wide side. Andrew steps back, moving around the pocket. We've got a flag down on the wide side. He's evading, and he gets brought down by number seven of the Vikings, Christopher Gilbert, outside linebacker, and we have a flag down, so it'll be interesting to see what this play call is. It's in the area of holding. Looks like James Truesdale, or Jason Truesdale there on the far side is calling for a decline. So that will bring up a fourth down if it's declined. Let's see what they call. Illegal formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. So that will bring up a fourth down for the Timberwolves, and their punt crew is coming on. Going to play the field the field position ball game tonight. If we see another booming kick from Hernandez like we have seen, this ball could very much hit the goalpost. Absolutely. <laughs> Won't count for three, though. Won't count for three. You're, you're dead on on that one. Snap is back. Kick is up for Hernandez. Fair catch called by the Vikings. He backs away. Excellent punt. Backs, excellent punt, punt by Hernandez. That ball is down at the five-yard line. What a change in special teams we saw from Hernandez from the first two possessions where the punts barely went 15 yards to a couple of real boomers this last time, and then he pins the Vikings down all the way down on their own five-yard line. I tell you, there aren't many high school kickers that can pin a ball like that, so great job by Hernandez and the special teams group to make the Vikings have to go 95 yards all the way to their to the end zone. It's what we were talking about at the start of the game, Nate. Uh, you get these jitters, first game of the season, haven't played in eight months, and then all of a sudden you get over it, you start balling out. There we go, there we go. All right, Union Pine's going to take over on their own five-yard line. Finkelstein back at quarterback, lined up in pistol formation. We've got doubles to their sideline. Handoff to Shaper, gets all the way up to about the 10-yard line. The 10-yard line, I'm calling about the eight. We do have a flag down on the wide side of the field. Let's see what they're going to call here. Boy, this has been a game of penalties, hasn't it? This has been a game of penalties. Let's see what White Hat calls. They're signaling towards the Vikings, which could pin them either, even farther back. Uh, Union Pines bring on a power set, it appears. Looks like they might get under center and uh, just try to evade a safety here. Well, let's see what they do. They're stepping it back, White Hat. They're still talking about it. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is declined by the Timberwolves. Interesting choice. Interesting choice there for Timberwolves. Seth, Seth, talk to us a little bit about uh, the thought process there by head coach Chris Metzger on why he would decline that penalty. Well, you've got them pinned back pretty deep as it is. Uh, so in this situation, oh. I guess you're trying to cost him the down. 
And the, the white hat might have called it incorrectly from what head coach Chris Mesker. I know the coaching staff up here on the box was definitely wanting him to take the penalty. And I think that might have been miscommunicated. The, they will be accepting the penalty half the distance. Well, that's a less interesting choice and more boilerplate. <laughs> that, that was more what was anticipated up here from the booth. Uh, getting to be right here next to this awesome Montgomery Central coaching staff. They uh, did not seem pleased with the declining of that penalty. So I have a feeling that was miscommunicated. Nonetheless, clock starts. Union Pines back pinned all the way on their three-yard line. Just going to run power to try to not get eaten up. Oh, and number 32, Shaper, still running. Gets all the way up to the 18, 19-yard line, 18-yard line. Not sure what happened there. He kept his legs dri driving, kept his shoulder down, and just plowed all the way through the Timberwolves, all the way up for a Union Pines first down. Brought to you by Shed Depot. Shed Depot for all your depot needs, all your shed needs. Sometimes so, on plays like that, your guy just wants it more. That's right. That just comes down to sheer will. Union Pines running the ball some more. Shaper on the carry gets up to the Timber. Oh, sorry, gets up to the Vikings 24-yard line. Number 10 on the tackle for the Timberwolves, Aiden Allsbrook, the uh, preseason All-State linebacker that was put up by high school OT. So I apologize for everyone we were calling him earlier. That is number 10, Aiden Allsbrook, on the tackle. Brings up a second and five for, sorry, second and four for the Vikings. Staying in their power formation. Hand off to Shaper. Gets up to about the third, about the 25, 26 yard line for a gain of two. Will bring up a third and two. Number two on the tackle for the, Timber, for the Timberwolves, Trey Chapel. This Union Pines, this is a big third down conversion to keep this drive going. 5.30 left to go in the third quarter. Definitely want to continue this drive. Union Pines is going to start running the ball, would assume a little bit more for some clock management purposes. Seth, talk to me about the clock management of, of football and, and why that's so important. Well, in Union Pines situation, they're probably going to try to bleed as much as they can because they're sitting on a two-touchdown lead and we're more than halfway through the third quarter. When, Sorry, when go ahead. you see uh, Montgomery Central get the ball back eventually, they're probably going to be trying to throw more quick passes, get the ball down the field more vertically to try to eat up less clock because the clock is not their friend right now. Very good. That was number nine, Ben Finkelstein on the carry for the, first, for the Union Pines first down, brought to you by Shed Depot. That tackle was number 30. Oh, gosh, where is it? I have a hard time reading numbers. John Vargas Hernandez, the punter, Comes on for the tackle as well, so great tackle by that young man. Multi-positions. Versatile athlete. Finkelstein under center, hands back off to Shapel. Breaks a few tackles and ended up coming down for a one-yard gain. Brings up second and nine for the Vikings. Union Pines continuing to run this clock. 4.30 left to go. This really starts to become a clock management and a possession ball game. They keep eating up this clock. You know, it's going to come down to how many possessions does Montgomery Central have left to score. Um, not a team that looks incredibly comfortable throwing the ball. So it'll be interesting to see as, as we progress through um, if their offensive mindset changes in their play calling. I would expect to see Union Pines keep running it. They've had success. Clock keeps moving. This is what they want to do. Fingelstein hands off to number 14, Ethan Biggs, bouncing outside, breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, gets all the way up to the 42-yard line for another Shed, Vikings first down. Shed Depot first down. Brought to you by Shed Depot, number 44 on the tackle, Xavier Berry, linebacker for the Timberwolves, ends up being the one that bring, brings down Ethan Biggs. That kid is so dynamic. Talk to us a little bit about his versatility and his dynamicness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when you get him in space and he's going vertically, he can shift left to right, make guys miss, and we saw him make about three guys miss right there. Ethan Biggs, a real blessing to get to watch every Friday night. So dynamic. I love getting to see that young man with the ball in his hand in space. Fingelstein hands off to uh, Pyle. Number 10 on the carry, Jeremiah Womack, junior running back for the Vikings. First time we've called his name tonight. 5'10", 180 pounds, brought down by a swarm of Timberwolves, or a pack of Timberwolves. 
We'll call it a pack. We're used to calling it a swarm because it's the Yellow Jackets is who we usually call. Um, but with us calling this tonight, the Timberwolves, we'll call it a pack. Why not, right? Yeah, they're the pack. I'm used to the pack being in Raleigh, but why can't the pack be in Troy? Why can't the pack be in Troy? All right. Brings up a second and eight for the Vikings. Quick handoff. Going nowhere for the Vikings will bring up a third and eight. Another big play here. Three minutes left to go in the third quarter. Union Pines really starting to eat this clock. Number 99, Timberwolves, big defensive tackle coming back into play. Be interesting to see this third down play here. Third and eight. It's hard to get, get a conversion on a third and eight with a run play. Be interesting to see if Union Pines puts the ball in the air or if they just – Keep trying to pound the ball. That clock just keeps keeps clicking. Boy, I'm struggling talking tonight there, Seth. Give me <laughs> give me a good smack. Knock some sense into my mouth. Well, that's the first game of the season for everybody. That's right. Us. That's right. First game of the season. All right, third and eight for the Vikings. Quarterback keep Finkelstein keeps gets all the way up to the 45. Brings up a fourth and five on their own 45-yard line for the Vikings. I would assume uh, head coach Truesdale and his crew would punt this ball off. And it does look like we have another crew coming onto the field. So the Timberwolves will put number two, Trey Chappell, back. So far, been a, been pretty quiet on special teams, but Trey Chappell, we've seen in space, gets dynamic real quick. So we'll make sure to uh, watch, see how this goes. Be interested to see there. John Cannon back. Chappell receives it, makes one Viking miss, makes two. Makes three Vikings miss, getting to the sideline, four, four, five. Finally brought down by a group of Vikings. He never goes down. He just gets knocked out of bounds by number seven, Christopher Gilbert, outside linebacker. That will be, give the Timberwolves their second possession of this half down on their own 42-yard line. And right now, this Montgomery Central team, they're looking for a jolt. They're looking for a shock. They need more plays like that. That was a plus 20-yard return on the punt right there. They need more plays like that. They need more plays like the tunnel screen that they got earlier in the third quarter that got them about 25 yards. Absolutely. Interesting situation here. The chain crew hasn't moved yet. I'm not sure what the situation is. The side judge walking in at the Vikings 49. Not sure what's going on here. We have, they're moving the ball all the way back to the 32 yard line. We have a holding on the Timberwolves. I never even saw the flag come out. So we have a Timberwolves penalty that makes number 10 or 11. That is number 10. That, that's number 10 for the Timberwolves. And that's a killer. You had the ball right there at the 40 and now it's back toward the 30. James Andrews gonna take this uh, Timberwolves offense back onto the field. Hand, oh, looks like a miscommunication. Andrews is going to keep it. He's going to run for his life. Number two of the Union Pines Vikings finally wraps it up, takes it to the ground. That's number two, Damian Bean for your Union Pines Vikings. Takes down Mr. James Andrews after a gain of one, and I think he ran about 20 yards to get that one. Absolutely. But that was great composure right there by the young man to not panic and get something positive out of a broken play. Absolutely, absolutely. That was a that was a good play by that young man. Looks like some miscommunication in the backfield. He got what he could. He got vertical and then and then made went down. So, good play by Mr. Uh, James Andrews. Back in shotgun formation, two backs deep. We've got another shuttle pass. Number four, number one on the carry, Javari Chapel gets all the way up to the 47-yard line. Brought down by a group of Vikings. That'll make a Shed Depot first down for the Timberwolves. And when you get Chapel in space and he gets ahead of steam, he's the tough guy to bring down. Absolutely. Chapel is seems to be the dynamic portion of this offense here. I really like seeing that, that little uh, two-handed option play there that Andrews run into him. I'm not sure if you're calling that a, 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 pitch, or a, a, a pitch or a pitch or a shuffle. And hand off to number 24 of the Timberwolves, Anthony Ewing carries the ball up right to the 50-yard line. That will bring up a second and seven for the Timberwolves. Number number 51 on the tackle for the Vikings, uh, Micah Fernandez. He's a defensive lineman for the Vikings down with the tackle. Second and seven, 
And that is the end of the third quarter. That one snuck up on me. With one quarter to go here in Troy, North Carolina, your Union Pines Vikings 14, Montgomery Central Timberwolves 0. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and be back for the last quarter of football. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Welcome back here to Troy, North Carolina for the fourth quarter of Montgomery Central. Timberwolves hosting the Union Pines Vikings. Union Pines Vikings up 14 to nothing against the Timberwolves. This is the NFHS game of the week brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. Huge shout out to them. And if you have any construction needs, go visit them. <laughs> go visit them. I'm sure they can help you out. So Timberwolves taking over for second and eight on their own 49-yard line. Andrews hands the ball off to Chapel. He's got some room. He's got some grass. He's running all the way up to the Unipines 33-yard line. Once he is down, the ball squirts out, but the, the, the turf can't cause a fumble. So, therefore, he was called down, and that is a, a Timberwolves first down brought to you by Shed Depot. That tackle was made by number 22, Damon Brimmer of your Union Pines Vikings. This is really the first series for the Timberwolves we've seen to put together a string of good plays. Um, and the common denominator here is who's getting the ball. Absolutely. Chapel again with the ball. Makes a man miss. Getting close to the first down marker. Getting Cha close out of bounds. And now he is in your REMAX red zone. Chapel's got a first down. And once he was pulled out of bounds, he was a late hit put on by number 11 from Union Pines, Harley Moyer on the late hit. There's no doubt that's what this penalty will be. It'll be half distance to the goal, so it'll be first down for the Timberwolves in the REMAX red zone, and I believe we will be close enough. Chains will be down, and it'll be first and goal. We'll wait and see, but this is without a doubt late hit. Without a doubt. We were sitting here. Coaches are up here beside us, and, and – they were calling it before it even happened. Personal foul, Personal foul on the Vikings. First down, Timberwolves in the REMAX red zone on Union Pines' nine-yard line. This is definitely an opportunity for the Timberwolves to put a score up, make this a one-possession ball game. If you're Montgomery Central, you have to be thinking six, and you have to be thinking it quick here, Seth. Absolutely. You don't have time to waste. You don't move the ball that uh, quickly vertically, and you're in the fourth quarter. Got to go fast. Oh, we looks like we're going to have a false start from the Timberwolves. That'll mark them back to first and goal on the 14. Looks like the quarterback leaned and stepped a little early prior to the snap. False start on the offense. Five yards, and that will be a repeat of down on the 14. Montgomery Central, that is their 11th penalty of the night. Yes. That's hard to win ball games when you have that many penalties. But nonetheless, they're here knocking on the door of the Union Pines Vikings. James Andrews back at quarterback, pointing out coverages. Hands the ball off to number one. Chapel gets ripped down at the 12-yard line. Tackle made there by number seven, Christopher Gilbert, the outside linebacker, for a gain of two that will bring up second and 12. I would go right back to him the next time. Absolutely. I believe if I was calling this offense, my whole plan would be give Chapel the ball. That will bring up, sorry, second and 13 here for the Timberwolves. James Andrews back, two back set. We've got doubles receivers to the short side of the field, closest to you, one wide way out there. Hands off. Man's got, space, got some space. That's number nine carrying the ball. Brandon Powell. 
gets carried all the way down to the 10, 10 and a half yard line here. We'll bring up a third and goal from the 10 yard line. If you're Montgomery Central here, you have to be thinking points and you have to be thinking it quickly. And Seth, you, are you in four down territory right now? Absolutely. You don't have time to waste here. Kicking a field goal would put you down 11. That's still a two possession game and you've got almost 10 minutes left on the clock. Absolutely, absolutely. So coming down here, we're definitely in four down territory for Chris Metzger and his Timberwolf staff. Number 24, 24 received it in the Wildcat. That is Anthony Ewing gets all the way down to the Vikings four yard line in this Remax red zone. Number 11 on the tackle, Harley Moyer. We've called his name a lot at safety. He was the last man to beat. And this here is the biggest play of the game so far. Biggest play of the game so far for the Timberwolves. You're absolutely right. Tackle there, oh, stabbed by 24. He washes right into the end zone. That's a Timberwolves touchdown. That makes it 14 to six here in Troy, North Carolina. Just what nine, the doctor ordered. 9.50 left to go in the fourth quarter. Just what the doctor ordered. You're right, Seth. Hernandez on for the PAT here. Make it a one, it's still a one possession ball game. Make it a seven point ball game, 9.50 left. We'll talk about theories in a minute when we get back after this PAT. Let's wait and see. Number 70 coming on late, forgot he was on PAT. Braxton Simmons, big boy. 30 took a step, snaps up, holds good. Kick is up and kick is good. 14 to 7 Timberwolves, 14 to 7 Vikings. We're going to take a quick break and be right back for the end of the fourth quarter. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. Your Montgomery Central Timberwolves just put points up on the board to make it a one-possession ball game, 9.50 left to go in the fourth quarter. We were just talking during the commercial break. I think we have us a ball game, gentlemen. Union Pines back, Ethan Biggs and Brody Trannell to receive this kick. Hernandez to kick off. This kid has a leg. We saw it already. Booms it. Kicks it to Trannel. Trannel recovers it off the bounce. He's got a huge gap. He's got a huge gap. He could take it all the way. Trannel's got one man to beat. Number seven catches him from behind. Tackle made by Zayatuan Price. Whoa, I thought that ball was going the entire way. Afterwards, Trannel throws the ball in the air. That is an unsportsmanlike conduct. There is a flag. That's going to march your Vikings 15 yards back. Bad play decision there by the Vikings. He had a lot of green grass, puts him in great territory, and then you take a penalty like that. That kills you. Nonetheless, this will be a Viking first down all the way down on the Timberwolves 30. Listening to the Union Pines coaches on the other side of this press box, they are less than pleased with that performance. Unsportsmanlike conduct, return team. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the return team. You can't throw the ball up in the air like that. You can't do that when you score. You can't do it when you re return a kickoff. And it's plays like that that you just hate to see as a coach. But as we said, this is the first week. So you expect to see a little bit uh, of more undisciplined behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. We will, we will see plays like that throughout the year, and these things happen. Nonetheless, it will be a first and ten for the Union Pines Vikings on the 30-yard line. Trying to pull up an update to Lee County score. Finkelstein keeps the ball. He's going to break outside. We're going to have a hold on number 20 of Union Pines. Brody Trannel will be called for the hold there. Finkelstein had a first down, was going the – looks like he was going to get to the first down and get to the sideline, but we do have a hold on number 20, Trannel. Finkelstein 
pointing towards Montgomery Central. We have a face mask. Sorry, I called that completely wrong. We have a face mask by the Timberwolves. 12th so of the night, 12th tw penalty. 12th penalty of the night. That'll march them half the distance to the goal, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll be five-yard face mask, five face mask on the defense. So that'll be a Shed Depot first down for the Vikings all the way down to the Remax Red Zone. Got to make sure we get our happy sponsors in. Great job by them. So this will be a first and goal. Oh, sorry, first and 10 on the 11-yard line. Finkelstein back in quarterback. Quarterback keep trying to run up middle, bouncing outside. He's got some green grass. He dives for the pylon. Wait for the side judge. Hands up. Vikings touchdown. And just like that, the game flips again. Just like that. You're exactly right. We were talking during the, during the commercial break that if Union Pines was going to answer, they were going to need to do it quick. That takes all the air out of this stadium. Montgomery Central was starting to get some excitement. You saw, started to see some, some vigor on the sidelines and in the stands. And just like that, with a great kick return, and a couple of penalties from the Vikings, but nonetheless, Finkelstein carries them all the way in to make it 20 to seven Vikings. 30 seconds later. 30 seconds later, John Cannon back to kick. PAT is up, kick is up, and it looks wide. No good, so that makes it 20 to seven Vikings. 920 left to go in the fourth quarter. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and be right back. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. And we are back here in the beautiful Troy, North Carolina, watching the Montgomery Central Timberwolves taking on the Union Pines Vikings after the Montgomery Timberwolves cut the lead down 14 to seven. Union Pines struck back with their touchdown of their own in a matter of 30 seconds. Very good, John Cannon back to kick. High, uh, a high placement kick, kicked on the, on the 30. Union Pines recovers. We talked earlier in the game, special teams could be the difference. They have a spot kicker. That is Union Pines ball on the Timberwolves. 29 yard line great place kick by the vikings i don't know if that was planned or they or that was just luck nonetheless it happened that'll be union pines ball ryan giggy up here their offensive coordinator could not be more excited vikings ball on the 29 yard line trying to put up another touchdown here on the montgomery central timberwolves and all the air in this stadium just just left it gone Stone silent. If there was any air left to be had, it is long gone now. You're right. Nonetheless, still 9-19 left to go in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time if the Timberwolves get a stop here. Oh, Jason Truesdale doesn't like what he sees, runs all the way down the 30-yard 30, 30 line. He's going to call a timeout. We're going to take another break here from our sponsors, and we'll be back to see if Union Pines can put more points up. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Welcome back to Troy, North Carolina. This is the NFHS Game of the Week. Union Pines just had a great special teams play to recover the kickoff on the Timberwolves 29-yard line. 
the offense getting set out, trying to put a few more points up on the board. Finkelstein back at quarterback with a deep back three yards. We get motion to the wide side. Hand off to 32, Shaper. He's got some green grass tackled, brought down at the 29 yard line. We do have a flag from the back judge. Looks to be in the area of holding. We'll wait and see what they call it. That was a six yard gain by Ross Shaper of the Vikings. Let's see what White Hat says. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul will continue to be first down. Let's see where they spotted it at. Taken all the way back, so it was right at the spot of the tackle. So that will bring up a first and 15 for the Vikings. Tough penalty for the Vikings after a good first down, bringing up a second and four. Now back to a first and 15. Clock's running nine, 10 left. Clock out there, it is clock operator, got it going. Finkelstein back at quarterback. Two receivers to the wide side of the field. Wing in motion, gets set. Snap, Finkelstein keeps. Quarterback keep running all the way up to the 32 yard line, 31 yard line. That clock just keeps right on ticking. Ryan Giggy and his offense wanting to really milk some of this clock, make this a possession ball game to where it will not matter if Montgomery Central gets the ball back. This brings up a second and eight. Second and seven. Second and seven here for the Vikings. Good stop there by a pack of Timberwolves to bring down Finkelstein. Union Pines taking their sweet time in this, uh, in this huddle, really working towards working this clock down. Nine seconds left to go on the play clock. Finkelstein back, wipes his hands off. Ball is snapped, uh, not snapped. And we have a delay of game. Took too long sending the wing in motion. And that will be a five yard penalty to bring up a second and 11. You know, sometimes we see schools where play clocks are off and it's hard to teach your quarterback to look at that back judge who when you get down to the 10 seconds will start his arm going up one arm at a time to count down for the play clock. That is not the case here tonight at Montgomery Central. Beautiful play clocks, beautiful scoreboard. Shaper on the carry, makes a man miss, spins out of another tackle, brought all the way down to the 25 yard line, will bring up a third and six for the Vikings. He got all of it back and some. Got it all back and then some. I like watching that young man Shaper run the ball. He runs the ball hard nose. He's not an incredibly tall young man, but he is a big young man. He lowers that shoulder and he is not afraid of contact. He's not trying to make you miss. He wants you to try to tackle him. That's right, good for him. Number two hobbling off for the Timberwolves, which is not a good thing. Trey Chapel. we talked about him being one of their most dynamic players on the field. We hope that he is back okay in a minute. He is hobbling. He's under his own weight though. Finkelstein keeps, he's rolling. He throws the ball out to Biggs, broken up by number seven of the Timberwolves. That was broken up by Zaytuan Price from the Timberwolves. Risky play there by number nine, Ben Finkelstein trying to squeeze the ball in to number 14, Ethan Biggs. Interesting to see what Union Pines will do here. They could kick, they could, or they could go for it. Fourth and six here, deep in their own, deep in, Montgomery Central's territory, Ryan Giggy calling an offense. It does not look like they're going to kick this ball, try to make it a three possession ball game. Union Pines, wings is set. Finkelstein keeps it. He's rolling, looking to throw. Throw to number 14, Ethan Biggs caught at the 15. And he looks like he will have the first down brought down. Ended up coming a few yards back, bumping all the way down to the 18. 18 yard line, that will be a a Vikings first down brought to you by Shed Depot. Shed Depot all the way down to the Remax red zone. So that'll bring up a first and 10 for the Vikings. Great play call there. Get Finkelstein moving, rolling to a strong side, hitting bigs in a crossing route. Huge play there for the Vikings. First and 10, this clock keeps right on ticking. We just broke seven minutes left to go. In the, in the quarter and the ball game. 
Truesdale running over to call another timeout, did not like what he sees. We will take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. We'll be back to see if Union Pines puts points up. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week. Finkelstein hands off to Shaper. Shaper's moving his feet, going all the way up to the 15-yard line. I do owe a deepest apologies to Shed Depot. I thought they were there in Southern Pines. I am wrong. They're in Tramway, North Carolina. They're right on US-1. I only grew up about three miles from there. I remember when that was a grassy field. But nonetheless, huge shout-out to Shed Depot for all of your shed needs. Make sure you go see them there on the service road at the corner of Pendergrass and US-1. So that was a first down run by Shaper. He is coming off, though. Not sure what that story is. This will bring up a second and seven for the Vikings. Finkelstein stays in at quarterback. Number 10 comes in to replace Shaper. That's Jeremiah Womack. Finkelstein keeps expect a quarterback run here. There we go. Montgomery Central brings them down right at the 10-yard line. Okay. Um, looks like number four on the tackle, Luke Jackson on the tackle for the Timberwolves. And right now, Union Pines is getting exactly what they want. They're eating up some yards, they're eating up clock, and they're close to scoring. Absolutely. We just broke six minutes left to go in the quarter. Big third and two here for the Vikings and the Timberwolves. Timberwolves have to get a stop here. You would have to imagine this game is about out of reach for them if they give up points here. But Finkelstein, their quarterback, this crowd getting loud here in Troy, North Carolina. Finkelstein keeps. He finds a gap. He goes all the way up to the six, maybe five-yard line into the Remax red zone. That is a Shed Depot first down. Make first and goal here for the Vikings. I just don't do that as well as Chris. Number 10 on the tackle for the Timberwolves, Aiden Allsbrook. He's that preseason All-State linebacker that we talked about earlier in the show, making his presence known quite a bit tonight here. First and goal here for the Vikings, taking their sweet time, about to break five minutes, counting down, and that clock just keeps on clicking. Finkelstein under quarterback, hands to Womack. Womack's getting stopped right at the two-yard line, one-yard line for the Timberwolves. So you have to be imagining, you know, that clock just keeps right on ticking, and they're getting closer and closer to putting up six. And given the circumstances, Union Pines might take it and stop it at the one if the clock keeps running. Absolutely. Shaper checks back in. Womack goes out. Great job running the ball by that young man. Shaper is back and I would anticipate seeing that big young man get the ball to put this, this, this ball game out of reach. Shaper gets the ball, plows through his own lineman. Touchdown, Vikings! Makes it 26-7 with 4.16 left to go in the fourth quarter. Montgomery Central just did not have enough meat up front to stop that young man, Shaper, from plowing his way into the, into the end zone. Last untimed down PAT. Looks like Union Pines, sorry, not a PAT. Union Pines is gonna stay on the field and try to make this 28 to seven. Finkelstein back at quarterback. Three back set, their power set, double wing. Uh, Finkelstein rolls, tosses. He got it. Two point conversion made to number 23. 
Austin Mooring on the reception. That makes it a 28 to seven ball game. Union Pines Vikings will take a quick word from our sponsors then we'll be back for the end of this ball game. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. John Cannon back to kick the ball off. Received by the Timberwolves. This young man has space. Number two, Trey Chapel. He's dynamic when he can get some space. Takes it all the way up to the 34-yard line. Good return there by the Timberwolves. If you're Montgomery Central, number 20 on the tackle there for the Vikings. That is Brody Trannell. He's the young man who had the big return earlier and then had the penalty. Brody Trannell on the tackle. Uh, if, if you're Montgomery Central here, you have to be thinking score, and you have to be thinking score very quick, Seth. This is where you unload the deepest parts of your playbook. you got to get points in a hurry if you want to come out of here with a, with a W. Absolutely. This is a three-possession ball game with 4.09 left to go. Union Pines has had no problem running the ball throughout the evening, so you would have to think that uh, you're going to put the ball in the air, you're going to put it out quick. Looks like trips to the wide side. I would imagine Montgomery Central is going to air it out here. Number five, James Andrews back at quarterback. Uh-oh. White Hat blows it before it even starts. Delay of the game for the Timberwolves. You hate to see that. They weren't even lined up by the time that, that delay of game was called. That's the last thing they wanted. That's the last thing. Is that 13? Or? That's their 13th penalty. That's number 13 on the night for the Timberwolves. First and 15, trips to the wide side of the field, nearest you on your screen. Looks like a bubble. One man beaten, two men beaten, and taken down at the 44-yard line by number 11 from Union Pines, number 22 from Union Pines, uh, Damon Brimmer, the free safety that we've seen throughout the night. One bad thing about that play, though, it is a Timberwolf first down brought to you by Shed Depot. One bad thing, that clock does continue to click when he was taken down inbounds. So Andrew's back, trips to the wide side again, We're doing levels formation here. Union Pines gets to the quarterback, brought down for about a seven-yard loss. Tackle by number 22, Damon Brimmer again, defensive end for the Vikings. And you see, this is a tough to, position to be in if you're Montgomery Central. The whole game, running and quick passes have been your bread and butter on offense, and now you got no choice but to drop back and air it deep. It's hard to do when you haven't been doing that in the entire game. It's hard to do, and Union Pines knows exactly what they're going to do. So doubles formation here for the Timberwolves. James Andrews running for his life, swallowed up again by a swarm of Vikings. Number 22 again on the tackle for the Vikings. Damon Brimmer in on the tackle for the second sack of this of this series of downs. will make third and a country mile here in Troy, North Carolina. I've called a lot of offensive games. I tell you guys, you don't have a third and 24 play. That is not something you practice regularly. Looks so, like they might just send four vertical. Huge stand there for the Vikings. And if you're Union Pines, you know what they're gonna do. You pin your ears back and you just let your guys loose. So we've got three wide, one to the top of your screen. James Andrews runs again for his life and brought down by number seven of Union Pines, Christopher Gilbert. Huge play, and I'm concerned Mr. Andrews might be hurt. We do have a flag way back in the in the uh, behind the play. I have a feeling that's going to be in the territory of holding. Good to see number five, James Andrews, back. It is a hold from the spot of the foul, so that'll put him back about the 11-yard line if my spot is correct. Looks like Union Pines might decline it and make a fourth down here. Let's see what they do. 
We, we have a hold offense. on the offense. Penalties decline. Good call by James Tru or Jason Truesdale and his staff here to decline it, make a fourth and country mile again for the Timberwolves. And this is the play of the game. If, if Montgomery Central does not convert here, Union Pines takes over, runs the ball, runs the clock out, Looks and like goes they're to the punt. house. They're going to punt. Montgomery Central going to punt here. About as close to a concession as you can get at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a concession by Chris Metzger and his staff. Pretty much going to let this clock run out. Wouldn't be surprised if we see this staff up here start to pack up and head towards the sidelines. Union Pines going to take over at the 46-yard line. We'll actually stay here as they flip the field here. We'll just keep rocking and rolling. 2.12 left to go in the fourth quarter here in, in Troy, North Carolina, Montgomery Central High School. Beautiful facility, beautiful press box, a really top-notch settings for week one of high school football here in North Carolina. Good temperature, storms ended up passing us by. So all around, great night here at Montgomery Central. Huge shout out to all of our staff at New Image Media. Tim Copas, who is an absolute rock star. Mr. Brandon Hillis, if you don't know him, he's an absolute rock star. So huge shout out to those guys. We're looking forward to watching the broadcast for Lee County. Um, back Krista Lambert and Jerry Chalmers and Wayne, or sorry, Wynn um, Crazley and all his crew over there in Lee County. We're looking forward to that. That tackle was made by number 10, of Montgomery Central. That'll bring up a second and 10 for the Union Pines Vikings. Seth, it's been a real pleasure being up here with you tonight, my friend. It's the first time we've seen each other in many, many years, but it's been an absolute pleasure having you up here tonight. Absolutely. I've enjoyed it too, Nathan. Uh, not many people might know this, but we do go way back. Grew up in the same church. Way, way back. Since your uh, creation. <laughs> <laughs> Finkelstein back receives... The, the snap hands off. We do have a flag on the far side. Let's see what the flag is. Ooh, we have two flags, one on the far side and the near side. Let's see what they call this here. That does stop the clock in 118 to the white hat, makes his arm in a circular motion. Illegal formation. Illegal formation okay. on the Vikings. Not enough men on the line. We talked earlier, you got to have seven, not six. That'll bring up a second and 14 for the Union Pines Vikings. White Hat hasn't blown it yet. There it is. Finkelstein back at quarterback. Deep running back, hands right off to number 10, Womack. Womack plows through one. Gets tackled out of bounds here. Solid pickup, but you know that coaching staff would rather him stay in bounds. Number 30 on the tackle for Montgomery Central, John Vargas Hernandez, who's also the punter and the kicker. We watched him lay some boomers out there tonight. This will bring up a third and seven for Union Pines as that clock does stop. Montgomery Central has not burned any of their timeouts to stop this clock. So this has all been from penalties and tackle out of bounds. 112 left to go in this ball game. I'd expect to see another run from Shaper here. Snap to Fingelstein. Shaper goes all the way up to the 46. That clock will continue to run. We'll bring up a fourth and two. Number 10 on the tackle. I believe that was Jeremiah Womack, actually. Sorry, Jeremiah Womack, you're right. Uh, number 10 on the tackle, Aiden Allsbrook on, on the tackle for the Timberwolves will bring up a fourth and two. Clock down to 45 seconds here in Troy, North Carolina. Union Pines leaving their offense out. They're going to try to get this first down and then lay a knee and call it a night. Let's see. Finkelstein under center. Finkelstein keeps. Finkelstein gets down or just stops. There we go. There he is. That'll be a Union Pine first down brought to you by Shed Depot. And that will be the end of the ball game. That clock will be able to run out. Union Pines, 28, 
Montgomery Central 7. That's a good first win for Union Pines. Jason Truesdale, his offensive coordinator, Ryan Giggy, huge first win for the Vikings way to kick off the season. Montgomery Central put together some good series, some, some not great series, but plenty to work on. It is week one. We'll have a quick post-game show here in Troy, North Carolina, and then we will pack it up and go to the house. So, quick word from our sponsor to be right back. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402, or visit me at crystalcopas.com. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed. One where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one place to make your buying experience easier. Visit our sales center located just off US Highway 1 in Sanford, or get started today at sheddepotnc.com to view in-stock models or to design your perfect shed using our 3D design tool. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience, each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Everything Pines Realty presents the Post Game Show on the NFHS Network. Brought to you by New Image Media. Hey, welcome back here to Troy, North Carolina. This is the Post Game Show brought to you by Everything Pines here in Southern Pines, North Carolina. With me is Blake. Blake has been a crucial part of of tonight's broadcast. You've met him at the halftime show. It's great to have him here for the post-game show. What y'all can't see on camera is my eyesight is not so great, and I have a hard time seeing numbers. I don't know why, but my man Blake here was running all over this press box tonight getting Seth and I numbers. So, Blake, first off, huge shout-out to you. Thank you for all of your help tonight. You made this so much better. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you saw tonight, man. Well, Nate, first off, thank you, and I appreciate it having uh, up here. It's a great – we were just talking about how it's much fun it is watching a game from up here, getting to really see everything. And I'll tell you, we talked about it at halftime. Penalties, special teams. Early in the uh, second half, there wasn't a lot of action, a lot of things going on. Montgomery was able to put the tail go to touchdown after running the Wildcat. You even said to me during the break, it's like, they should stick with the Wildcat. It's working. Sure enough, you know, you're waiting on that. Momentum's back on their side. Here we go, huge kick return from Union Pines, 70 yards. Yeah, they got brought back with a 15-yard penalty, but two plays later, they're in the end zone. Then another kickoff, a bloop little onside kick drops in right by the 30-yard line, and Montgomery is turned around, and Union Pines gets it right back, and that's the nail in the coffin right there at the end of the game. Special teams and penalties all night long for Montgomery was the issue. You could tell after the big, big kick return, took them all the way down. Yes, they had a 15-yard penalty. Union Pines didn't have a lot of trouble scoring on that drive. And you could tell after that, Montgomery Central had just lost all wind in their sails. Yes. And and then the kickoff placed right at the 35, recovered by Union Pines. That was it. Yeah. We knew that was it. Um, a lot of people, when they think about football, a lot of people think of offense and defense, right? Everyone thinks of, well, there's two facets. you you got to score the ball. you got to stop other people from scoring, right? But special teams make such a huge difference week in and week out, especially in high school football. Yeah. Um, a lot of coaches don't focus on special teams. It's kind of like a last-minute thought process. Oh, crap, we got to do this Thursday, make sure we know our kickoffs, our kick returns and whatnot. Um, we saw it tonight, and, you, and you've hit on this, special teams was the difference tonight. Yeah. You know, a couple of bad punts from Montgomery Central. Union Pine scores on the first bad punt of the night. They have a huge kick return, score points. Then they recover a kick return, score yeah. points. Without those, if we had no mishaps on special teams from the Timberwolves, 
It's a tie ball game. Yeah. I tell you, sorry, Nate, to cut you off there. And that's what I wanted to touch on, too, a little bit, is the field positioning, especially at high school, as you talked about, getting the ball on your own 20 as opposed to the 50 makes such a big difference because these guys are young and they're talented, athletic. But to put together 80, 75 yard drive time after time is really difficult. And four or five times a night, Union Pines got the ball on the 30 plus, not yep. the 50 plus, the 30 plus. And when you do that, I don't care how good your offense is, how good your defense is, you're going you're gonna to get scored on. Excuse me, your defense is going to get scored on because they just can't continue to sustain that. And you saw Union Pines didn't throw the ball out tonight, but they had some success with it off the run because they were just continuing to quarterback sweep and going and hitting the edge and getting vertical and just busting tackles and getting all the way to the end zone. Second That's half. right. That's right. So I, I do think that was the, the, the keys to the game for Union Pines win special teams. Um, let's talk about some of the outstanding players we saw from Union Pines tonight. Um, first for me, Ben Finkelstein really ran the ball well. Um, I got to watch Finkelstein in the years past, watch him come up through the JV route up to varsity. Um, his arm progression has come a long way from where we saw it last year. Um, still still some work to do on that. But what really stood out for me is how Finkelstein kept his composure in the pocket, led that offense throughout the night, and his feet. That young man does not want to go down. Yeah, he's got a lot of speed, a lot of quickness, and you could tell very good uh, instincts and reflexes out there several times. And there was one play. He runs a little quarterback draw. He runs into his own offensive lineman, bounces out back to the outside, picks up eight, nine yards. A lot of quarterbacks in that situation, they panic. They go straight to the ground. Okay, i got to just protect the football and not worry about this. The kid was not scared at all, and he just continued to make play after play. And when he had to use his arm, Nate, he showed off. He's got a pretty good cannon, and yeah. he's pretty accurate with it. And the two-point conversion there, and then the nice little uh, screen passes, and then also a little out route there toward the end, 13, 14-yard dot. So I'm looking to see him progress through the season and really become better and lead this team to some victories. Really looking forward to seeing Union Pines. When I talked to Jason Truesdale earlier today, he talked about in the offseason one of their key focuses, if not their only key focus, was the weight room. And in years past, we've seen Union Pines. Union Pines is not a big school. And when you don't have a huge student body, you don't have a ton of huge bodies in your school, right? Your certain percentage of, of, of kids are going to be so big, but when, you're, when your numbers are lower, obviously that number of big kids is going to be lower too. Um, and so Jason Truesdale talked about the weight room, how to do the weight room, had his guys in the weight room three, four days a week, all off season. And I think it really showed tonight there was never a play against Montgomery Central that I thought, man, they really got manhandled there. Yeah, they really uh, control the tempo of the game. I mean, listen, Montgomery played pretty solid defensively. They really did. Their offense struggled at times. The Wildcat worked for them, but it came too late in the third quarter, and they said, okay, we finally got something figured out, but now we can't even get the ball back to run some more Wildcat. So that was really the end of it. Like you said, the special teams made the biggest difference in this game. Without that, you're looking at a tie ball game, maybe a one-possession game. Absolutely, absolutely. So it looks like we have fireworks tonight. For senior night, that's always cool. Um, overall, great first broadcast. Huge shout out to Seth. Huge shout out to you, Blake. It was an absolute pleasure being here. Always great to have Brandon Hillis and Tim Copas run our production for us. Thank you to all of our sponsors, especially Everything Pines for um, sponsoring this post game show. I think I'm going to go watch some fireworks. I think that and, sounds like a good and, idea. And then Nate. go find us a good place to go have a bite to eat. So thank you all for tuning in. Without all of you tuning in to watch us week in and week out, this would never be possible. Um, look forward to, to being with you throughout the throughout the fall. And thank you for tuning in. This has been the NFHS Game of the Week here in Troy, North Carolina. Um, Union Pines starts off the season strong with a 1-0 with a 1-0 start. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. 
buy your next.